rain pouring down at RFK Stadium in the nation's capital, putting a damper on what would have been the 111th consecutive sellout crowd here at RFK Stadium. The Redskins, with a record of 1-6, and six, preparing to play host to the New England Patriots, who have won two while dropping five. Hi, everybody. Bob Costas, along with Bob Trumpy. Despite the rather dismal records of these clubs to match the dismal weather, there have been some outstanding individual performances for both the Redskins and the Patriots, at least statistically, and we can start when we talk about New England with Steve Grogan. You are right, and whenever you talk about the career of one Steve Grogan, it's a roller coaster ride. He's up part of the season, down another part of the season. Well, right now he is riding a crest. Last week, his second start, his first start in about four games, he had 11 of 19, two touchdowns, that one to Stanley Morgan, part of 436 yards that the New England Patriots had on the day. Watch this play. Not known as a runner nowadays because of bad knee problems, faked out our cameraman and the Houston Oilers, and runs in for a touchdown all by himself. Another dimension of the New England offense is number 32. His name is Andy Johnson, a college quarterback out of Georgia. And watch this play, a little deception. It ends up in the hands of Stanley Morgan for another touchdown, but how about those stats? Five of five, three per touchdown. Part of a, a real blowout against the Houston Oilers last week, Bob, 38 to 10. Now, when we talk about the Redskins, they've got a couple of guys on their roster who through the years have been Patriot killers. One is John Riggins, the running back, sat out last year, back this season. With the Jets through many seasons in nine games against the Patriots over the years, he's averaged better than 100 yards rushing per ball game. And who will ever forget that great Monday night performance back in 78 by Joe Washington? The people in New England certainly won't. He ran back the, uh, the second half kickoff, 94 yards for a touchdown. This little guy in his years with Baltimore has always been a thorn in the side of the New England Patriots. And they need big plays out of him today. Terry Metcalf, once one of the great all-purpose offensive players in the NFL, has returned from Canada with the Redskins, had trouble at running back with fumbles, and now Joe Gibbs is going to move him out to wide receiver. Reunited with Joe Gibbs, they were together in St. Louis, and this young man has a wealth of talent, but he's got to prove it. The Redskins are short of big plays. That's why he'll be out there today. We'll come back to RFK Stadium with the kickoff right after this. executive producer of NFL 81 is Don Olmeyer. Today's show was produced by David Stern, directed by Bob Levy. Technical director, Sal Nagita. Associate producer, David Neal. Associate director, John Filippelli. Coming up next, the Patriots versus the Redskins. Sports presents the best of the National Football League. And today, from Robert F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium, it's the New England Patriots versus the Washington Redskins. Today's game is brought to you by Schlitz, the master brewer's brew. Just one taste and you'll know behind every Schlitz is a man who knows his beer. By the new Chrysler Corporation for 1982, Chrysler has the cars, the quality, and the prices America needs. By KCare, where quality parts and service are Kmart priced. And by America's full-service bankers, ready to serve you where you see this symbol. Back at RFK Stadium, Bob Costas along with Bob Trumpy. You are looking at the two worst teams in terms of turnovers in the entire NFL. The Redskins are minus 12 on the giveaway takeaway table. The Patriots are minus 11. And with what is now a torrential downpour, it certainly cannot help ball clubs which have had trouble holding on to the football. Well, it turns a Washington Redskins team, which is having all kinds of problems getting the ball down the, field, down the field into a very, very conservative football team. And the same may be true of the offense of the New England Patriots. John Smith will kick it off as the Redskins have won the toss. And it comes to Otis Wansley. Wansley Fumble. near the 30 and a loose football. No sooner do we talk about it than the Redskins may have turned it over. The Patriots think they have it. The officials haven't said anything yet. There you go, New England football on the very first play, we get a turnover. That's exactly what Joe Gibbs, the coach of the Washington Redskins, did not want to happen, obviously, but he uh, 
kind of talked to his team all week long about having good special teams play. I think Roland James, 38, you'll see on the recovery. But it's not a big hit that brought about, well, he had his hands on it. We'll give it to 38. Everybody agree to that? I'll go with that. Mosi Tatupu was also there. So with the fumble recovery, the Patriots, who have averaged better than 440 yards in total offense over their last four games, go to work at the 37-yard line of the Redskins. And the carry goes to the rookie, Tony Collins. And Collins turns out a first down before being shoved out and around the 25 by free safety Mark Murphy, number 29. Let's take a look at the Patriots' starting lineup as Collins goes out after a 12-yard pickup. Collins is replaced by Vegas Ferguson, at least for that play. Don Calhoun, the fullback. Grogan starting again. He and Matt Cavanaugh have been on again, off again throughout the season with New England. Morgan and Jackson are the wide receivers, and Don Hasselbeck is the tight end. The carry goes to Vegas Ferguson. And the second-year man out of Notre, Notre Dame is brought down by linebackers Alkowitz and Dusek. the aforementioned wide receivers. Harold Jackson, who needs just 69 yards to become only the third player in NFL history to go over 10,000 receiving yards. Stanley Morgan, one of the NFL's great deep threats, and Don Hasselbeck. And the offensive line with Gary Petz starting at right guard in place of Bob Kreider, who is out with a hyperextended knee. They give the ball to Don Calhoun. And Calhoun carrying on second and seven. Picks up perhaps a couple, and they'll be left with third down and five from the 20-yard line. skin defense ranked number one in the NFC and second overall in the league behind Denver there are the linebackers and they have had injuries galore on both sides of the line of scrimmage both offensively and defensively Parrish and Lavender among the game's finest corners of course each a pro bowler third down five from the 20 Grogan to the air with plenty of time and a man wide open. It's Andy Johnson, their third down specialist, and he has the first down inside the 15. Uh, this is a team, the New England Patriots, who uh, use that situation substitution. And when Andy Johnson goes in a ball game, he goes in to do two things, pass it or catch it. And this is where the game is now won in professional football with the active running backs out of the backfield. You need very, very quick linebackers to go with those guys out there in coverage that time Joe Lavender on the coverage first and 10 New England and you got to look at Ron Earhart the Patriot coach they still think they have a chance in the AFC East they have six games left within the division and other foes within that division have very tough schedules remaining Tony Collins coming back the other way Brogan throws a block for him they'll get a gain out of it inside the 10 yard line on what could have been a big loss John Hanna and Steve Grogan threw the key blocks as Collins reversed his field and turned nothing into something pretty big. Before he reversed his field, it's very obvious that the New England Patriots are going to pick on the other side. That's Carl Orch and Brad Dusick. But Collins, a rookie, showing great presence out there on the field. And you finally see the tackle. And it now makes it about second and three. Monty Coleman eventually brought him down at the six-yard line. Collins has carried twice for 16 yards. I would expect them to run to their offensive right side once again until Washington stops them. 12.44 to play, first quarter, down four at RFK Stadium, and Collins slips on the wet turf and is down at the five, which will leave them with third down and a couple. These teams have met twice before. In 1972, New England beat the Redskins 24-23 at Foxborough. That was the Redskins' Super Bowl season, the year they went to the Super Bowl and lost to the Dolphins. In the opener in 1978, the Redskins prevailed 16-14 as Brad Dusick picked up a fumble by Horace Ivory late in the fourth quarter and went 31 yards for the game-winning touchdown. Third down, two. They don't get it. Vegas Ferguson stopped for a loss. Neil Alkowitz, the middle linebacker, hit him first. Again, going to the right side, the offensive right side. Finally, Lorch and Dusick uh, break up the play, and along with Alkowitz, all those guys are playing injured. You see Ferguson, he's a little bigger than Tony Collins, therefore they want him carrying down there, but a great play by the Washington Redskins defense there. When they had to make the big play, they did. Now enter John Smith, who has hit five of nine field goals this year. And from this distance, he's three of three. They'll spot it at the 15. 
with Kavanaugh to hold and Dwight Wheeler to snap and a 25-yard attempt by Smith, who has led the NFL in scoring in each of the last two seasons, and he tacks three points onto his personal total here. So it could have been worse for the Redskins. The Patriots got as close as the five before being turned back. They settled for the field goal, 11-26 to play first quarter, three-zip New England. Every seat is sold for the 111th consecutive time here at RFK, but some seats are not occupied. The game being televised by NBC locally since it was sold out well in advance, and with this downpour, a few people have elected to stay home. John Smith kicks off again. Mike Nelms, one of the NFL's best return men, comes up to take it and crosses the 30-yard line before the Patriots shove him back, a reception committee led by John Zamberlin, number 54. Joe Theismann makes his first appearance. That's not a mistake. Just one running back, Joe Washington. They go with the two tight ends and the one setback most of the time. Metcalf will open at wide receiver along with Art Monk. And Don Warren and the veteran Rich Castor, the former Jet, are the tight ends. There's the offensive line. May and Grimm, each rookies. Bostic just in his second year. Ron Saul and George Stark, longtime veterans. Washington turns the corner with good first down yardage. Tim Fox, the free safety, eventually shoves him out of bounds. Bob, we made a point in the pregame program that there are some players who seem to have a psychological edge against opponents. Joe Washington against the New England Patriots, although he is now coming out. Hopefully he's not injured. Uh, the Washington Redskins cannot afford another injury of any sort, but he seems to have the magic number against New England. The Pats defense. Last year, they led the entire NFL with 57 sacks. This year, their defensive line has accounted for just seven sacks in seven games. Steve Nelson, perhaps their best linebacker, is still on injured reserve with a separated shoulder. There are their four backers. Claiborne and Keith Lee starting in place of Mike Haynes are the corners. Sanford and Fox are the safeties. Riggins carries on first down. And a flag flies on the play. Bob, you mentioned the defense in the New England Patriots. I think it's interesting. Holding... Washington, they are the most penalized team yardage-wise in the NFL going into this week. That's now their 54th penalty, and it's for almost uh, 500 yards. But anyway, that defensive line of the New England Patriots, all of them are over 30 years old. And, of course, they are without the outstanding right corner, Mike Haynes, who suffered a collapsed lung prior to the Houston game, and he will be out at least a couple more weeks. Keith Lee starts in his place. Here's Red Cashin. Holding by number 53 of the offense. It's still first down. So you ask, how can the Redskins be fifth in the NFC in offense, first in defense, and one and six? Well, when you have the leading giveaway total in the entire league and 37 points scored directly against you by your opponent's defense and special teams, and when you're the most penalized team in the league, it's easy. Washington carries, and Joe Washington is cut down quickly. Richard Bishop, number 64, the nose tackle, along with help from Tony McGee, 78, in on the stop. This is a, an offense in Washington, too, that about three weeks ago, everybody jumped on Joe Gibbs' case for throwing the ball so much in their opening game of the season against the Dallas Cowboys. They threw it 49 times. In the last couple of weeks, they've run it an awful lot, and these nearsighted fans in Washington are still screaming. They're looking for a happy medium somewhere. They got four back on that play, second and 16 from the 37, 10-32, remaining in the first quarter. Theismann in the air for the first time, a wobbly pass that is dropped by Joe Washington. Although it wasn't a perfect spiral, Joey should have held on to it. Well, I think now that both teams must worry about footing. I think Joe Washington was trying to make sure that he stayed on his feet because if you fall down with a little pass right over the middle like that, you're right in front of the linebackers. It's interception all over the place. Theismann is looking to the sideline. Their signals are hand signaled in from the bench. Joe Washington, who dropped that last one, has been a frequent Theismann target with 25 receptions this year. Terry Metcalf, playing most of the time prior to today out of the backfield, has caught 24, so they go to their backs a lot. Roland James in as the nickelback on third down and 16. Theismann airing one out along the sideline and incomplete in the direction of Rick Walker, number 88. That is something I would imagine they would uh, come back to. I noticed Rod Schott, number 56 of New England, went out in coverage with Rick Walker, and he went out late. It looks like a new formation or a new motion that the Patriots have not seen on film. Now Mike Connell to punt. Last year he beat out the veteran Mike Bragg for the starting job. And there you see his numbers this season, averaging just over 40 yards. Stanley Morgan drops back, standing at the Patriot 25. 
Good kick. Morgan retreats all the way back near the 15-yard line. But a decent return out near the 32, and another flag is down. Looks like the officials are going to be the stars of this show. And those officials are, while well, we have a chance, Red Cashin, the referee, the umpire Art Demis, the head linesman Jack Johnson, the line judge Neil Gareb, the back judge Ben Tompkins, the side judge Nate Jones, the field judge Dick Ferguson. 46-yard boot that time by Connell, and here's Red Cashin. Blocking above the waist from the rear, number 82 of the receivers after the kick. It's first and 10. Ken Toller, the rookie out of Old Miss, is the guilty party. And a timeout with 10 minutes and 10 seconds to play in the first quarter. Pat Ball at their 23, and they lead it 3 0. You know, Trump, every team has trouble in the NFL with injuries, but the situation here in Washington has been almost unbelievable. Yeah, you're right. They have five players right now with 10 days' experience. These are some of the guys. The last guy they lost on that list was Rich Mullat. He had surgery around his knee last Monday. They've got guys like Dallas Hickman, Charlie Weaver, Quentin Lowry, Peter Cronin on their roster who have been with the club 10 days or less. Yes. So in effect, Joe Gibbs is operating with only maybe 38 to 40 players who actually can come in and play for a sustained period of time. And the problem with that is with so many injuries to the Redskins, they really can't concentrate on a game plan because they have no idea who is going to be able to play. Look at some of those injuries. I mean, no team, I believe, in the last five or six years has had that kind of injury situation in the NFL. Counting training camp going back to the summer they have had more than 20 players go on injured reserve second and eight and Grogan airs one out long got a man out there Jackson Good diving catch by Harold Jackson well he just keeps getting better you know this little guy he plays with the big fellas out there but at about 175 pounds and all the years he's played in the NFL, he has never missed a football game. He is third in reception yardage behind Lance Allworth and Don Maynard. And this will probably make it 40 yards closer to that 10,000 yard mark. Which 39 leaves him, to be exact. 39, which leaves him what? 29 to go before he reaches that 10,000 yard mark? Look at, the, look at the concentration on the football. Falling down catches it against Lamar Parrish, number 24. The 553rd reception of his career, 75 of them have been for touchdowns. He's 30 away from the 10,000 plateau. Don Calhoun carries and smack into a stone wall. Well, so far, the rain has not bothered the, the New England Patriots, and the fact that on that particular pass play, they complete it, it'll kind of get some of the bumps out. It'll get some of the, uh, the, uh, the misgivings they may have, the New England Patriots, about throwing the football. Grogan has a big hand, I believe, can throw the ball in inclement weather fine. On the other side of the football, I don't believe Joe Theismann is big enough hand-wise to really accommodate a football that's wet and heavy. We'll see what happens through the football game. From the 34 of the Redskins on second and eight with 8.54 to play in the first quarter. Patriots leading 3-0 and driving for more. Grogan with time and a target. Jackson makes the catch, skips out of bounds. They've got a first down near the 20-yard line. We'll come back with the Patriots' first down play right after we check with NFL 81 in New York. Here's Bryant Gumbel. Well, Bob, out in Cleveland, the Browns took the opening kickoff and went right through the AFC's most generous defense. The Browns going 70 yards for a score. Brian Sykes, Ozzie Newsom, has Cleveland in front 7-0. Let's go back to Bob and Rich Stadium at RFK. Okay, thank you, Brian. The ball is spotted at the 18-yard line. Calhoun and Ferguson to the backs. Brogan gives it to Ferguson. Fumble as he's hit. Who comes out of this scramble with it? Indications are the Patriots kept it. 73, John Hanna was the guy on the recovery. You know, Bob, it's interesting. So far, the Washington Redskins defensive backs are playing way off the line of scrimmage. You'll see Ferguson get hit here on good corner support, and the ball bounces loose, and Hog Hanna right there to get it. Anyway, that soft corner coverage, I imagine, is basically because of the wet footing, and they don't want to... Um, the, 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 you must favor the offense when, whenever there's a bad footing or a rain or anything like that, so the corners are playing off. I think New England's going to be able to throw the ball underneath those corners almost all day long. But the same is true also for Washington on offense. A short break while they get a dry football in there. Hog 
kind of made that fumble recovery. Sports Illustrated had him on the cover a few weeks back. Greatest offensive lineman of all time. Is that excessive praise or is it in the ballpark? I don't believe that that's excessive praise at all. And when they had Leon Gray sitting on that side with Hawk Hanna, I thought they had the best one side of an offensive line ever to play the game. Tony Collins off right tackle for a couple before being stopped by strong safety Tony Peters. Collins had a big game last week, 17 carries, 89 yards against the Oilers. His biggest game in this is rookie season, a 96-yard effort against Kansas City. Andy Johnson now in the ball game once again, number 32 for the New England Patriots. And uh, let's not pull any punches. I'd say he'd be his prime receiver. Let's give him three instead of two and bring up third down and five for Brogan and the Pats. Shotgun. Seven and a half minutes to play first quarter. Corner scrambles left. This is something he can do. He's going to get first down yardage. He dives inside the 10 yard line. He needed to go to the eight, and it looks like he's there. His primary receiver, Andy Johnson, slipped down too, and that's why Grogan had to run. He was watching him all the way. Watch 73, John Hanna. A real bull in there. Great strength. He is on Wilbur Young. Between those two guys, they'll tip any canoe you might put in the lake. But he can do everything offensively that you can ask of an offensive lineman. They get the first down just inside the eight-yard line. They have been even closer than this previously. Had to settle for a field goal. Ron Earhart working on the gum and contemplating a two-and-five record. Johnson still in the ball game, Bob. I would expect a pass or maybe a reverse of some sort. He very seldom carries the ball, though. There's Johnson in motion. Broke. Johnson's open. He went instead to Jackson, and Harold Jackson couldn't hold on with Joe Lavender arriving late on the coverage. Bob, I must make a comment. I believe that Harold Jackson's responsibility there is to clear the area for Andy Johnson. I don't believe he is normally a pass receiver in that situation. You see him look outside and look back inside. It may have been tipped slightly, but Harold Jackson is not known to drop many passes like that. Grogan thus far is three of four for 62 yards. The nicest guys you'll ever meet, Harold Jackson. Boy, he enjoys this game of football. He uh, plays it, gets ready for it 12 months a year. His very first game as a member of the Patriots was against the Redskins back in 78. Caught seven passes for 124 yards, one of them for a touchdown. Second and goal from the eight. Brogan into the end zone and nearly intercepted, batted down by Lamar Parrish, who has 45 career interceptions, third among all active players. Mel Blunt of the Steelers is first with 48. Ken Riley, your old teammate with the Bengals, has 47. He was Lamar Parrish's old teammate with the Bengals, too. And Lamar does not have an interception so far this year. That would have been a 100-yard return if he'd have caught that one very, very close. Steve Grogan was very lucky that that ball was not intercepted. Well, now you look for the trick play, Bob. They've gone with the standard stuff on first down and second down. Now you look for something funny. Do you go with the halfback option this close, or do you not have enough field to work with? No, no, you can't go with the halfback option this close. They can go with the shotgun, however. Eight yards from the goal line on third down. Brogan tucks it in inside the five, dives near the four. And I think we'll see John Smith. Well, Washington has so far held the fort. We'll look at the tight end here, and in this situation, this close to the line, of, to the goal line, you got to figure that he's one of the primary receivers. Standing there, I believe he is open, but Grogan just could not catch sight of him. Obviously, uh, not the primary receiver. Good job here by Grogan. Still suffering a little bit from a bad knee, but not, not enough to uh, stand back there like some statue. He's going to do everything he possibly can to get at the end zone. Well, spotted at the 13, a 23-yard attempt. And Smith is perfect once again. So John Smith has connected first from 25 and now from 23. The Patriots have been inside the 10 twice. They've settled for a pair of field goals. And with 5.38 to play in the first, they lead it 6-0. John Smith, who has recently added the kickoff chores to his field goal duties, will boot it away once more for New England. Mike Kubach, formerly on the roster, is both the punter and kicker, released a few weeks ago. And they have since released his Nelms brings it out across the 20-yard line for the Redskins. We are yet to see the new Patriot punter, Rich Camarillo. Next Sunday, join host Bryant Gumbel for NFL 81. All the highlights, scores, and late-breaking news from all the games. Then regional NFL action 
featuring two crucial AFC division games, Houston against the Bengals and Kansas City against the Chargers. Check your local listings for the game of time in your area next Sunday on NFL 81. About the scoring drive for New England, 11 plays, 73 yards, 4 minutes and 32 seconds, a 22-yard field goal. The Washington Redskins so far one first down to five for the New England Patriots. In motion is Washington. They swing it out to Washington, trying to set a screen up for him. He busts tackles, and Joe Washington is out near the 40-yard line. Ray Claiborne, along with Rick Sanford, finally stopping him. You know what they're doing, Bob? What's happening to the New England Patriots now is the linebacker is going out in coverage on Joe Washington. Number 53 is out there, and he's trying to support up underneath. You see 25 also trying to make the tackle, along with Hawkins. And Joe Washington is just a little elusive kid. 16 yards on the 1,000th pass completion of Joe Theismann's NFL career. And that's something we were talking about before the game, Trump. You said you'd like to see the Redskins run more of that. Get that screen, get those blockers out in front of either Metcalf or Washington. Exactly. The little screen play out there in the flat. Give it to John Riggins. And Riggins for three tough yards, perhaps, in the grasp of Tony McGee and Julius Adams. Riggins has been nothing if not consistent. He has averaged 4.1 yards a carry throughout his career, and this is his 10th NFL season. And in this season, he's averaging 4.1 as well. It's amazing, too, that he took last year off and comes back like he never missed a season. You know, that's very unusual. Jerry Shirk in uh, Cleveland said he's got the, he had to relearn how to play the game of football. Riggins apparently has not had to make that, make that transition so far. Took 1980 off after a great season in 79 when he had more than 1,100 yards. Theismann firing right sideline. Oh. And a leap oh. oh, a dandy grab by Art Monk, the second year man out of Syracuse. Terry Metcalf at outside receiver, and I think one of the reasons was to take the pressure off Art Monk. You can see that this young kid out of Syracuse has learned quickly. He gives Sanford a little elbow here, just a little elbow to try, or excuse me, Ray Claiborne, just a little elbow here to give himself a little more space to catch the football, and then with those gloves on, has a good pass reception. That's good for a first down, and that's the big play that Joe Gibbs and the Washington Redskins have been hoping for. For Monk, who caught 58, a Redskins record as a rookie, his 29th reception this year. They pitch it to Joe Washington. And Washington tumbles down at about the 22-yard line. Rod Schott, number 56, outside linebacker with the stop. 34 yards on the catch by Art Monk from Joe Theismann. We move inside, three minutes to play in the first quarter, and the rain is heavier, if anything, at RFK. You would hardly believe this weather, considering what a beautiful day it was in the nation's capital yesterday, but it changed quickly. I mentioned that the New England Patriots over the last three years are 2-8 and eight on grass fields, natural turf. The Redskins, by the way, are 0-3 at home this year. The Patriots are 0-3 on the road. Something's got to get. Riggins to carry tackle and Riggins is down near the 16 yard line he is close to the first down he's about a yard shy of it Tony McGee with the tackle well now Washington can breathe a little easier they were losing the field position battle there and with this bad weather certainly want to get the ball down there there with it certainly in range of Mike Mosley's leg excuse me I said Mike Mosley make that Mark Mosley Wansley is in the lineup now, wearing number 39. He joins John Riggins, and they set up in an eye on third down one. In motion, Art Monk. They ask Riggins to get it, and he does. Interesting that he is normally the fullback, John Riggins, 44. They put him back in the tailback spot, put him about seven yards deep, and let him build up a little steam, and then he just blasts through the line of scrimmage. Redskins with a first down as Riggins departs briefly at the 15-yard line of the Patriots. A minute and 20 seconds to play in quarter number one. On a pair of John Smith field goals, the Patriots lead it 6-0. And the Patriots now have four defensive linemen in the ball game, Bob. Mike Monk is out wide to the left. Joe Washington is the single setback. They give it to Washington. And he finds the yards tough to come by. A couple, maybe, 
Julius Adams, among others, in on the stop. Adams making the Pro Bowl last year for the first time. Now, this is the spot, Bob, where I was talking about before the ball game. Perfect spot for a screen. You've got four defensive linemen in there. You run Washington in motion, and you get a guard out there in front of him. I mean, he tiptoes into the end zone, and that's something that apparently Washington has not used a great deal so far. This is a perfect spot for it. Second down and eight. Joe Washington with four carries for 20 yards thus far. Monk again out wide to the left, and now he comes in motion. Last 25 seconds of the first quarter. It is a screen. Whoa. Heisman firing. Whoa. And dropped by Rich Caster. Caster, the 12-year veteran, might not have scored on the play, but he would have been down around the one, and it was in the bread basket. He couldn't hold it. Claiborne on the coverage, and a great call by Joe Gibbs. He faked the screen outside, and it drew the linebacker out, 53 Matthews. And when it drew the linebacker out, then the hole underneath. Watch 53 go out with Washington. You see him right there. Now the hole is open for Caster underneath. He doesn't drop any of these. Claiborne, 26 on the coverage, and who is he mad at himself? Heisman's figures thus far, two of five for 51. It's third down and eight coming up, and while they look after Caster, we'll take this break. Rich Caster, who was just coming back from a lacerated eye, now is favoring a knee as he's helped off the field. Third down and eight from the 13-yard line with 18 seconds to play in the quarter. The Redskins must hold their team meetings in the hospital. That's where most of the guys are. In motion is Walker. Theismann with plenty of time. He's got his man. Washington scores. The game is tied. It had to happen eventually, Bob. They kept putting linebacker coverage on running backs out of the backfield. That time it was Mike Hawkins. Watch him at the top of the screen. 59. 25 goes out of your screen. He fakes out. Goes in. And just with sheer foot speed and a great catch is wide open six points Here's answer that. mark mosley now who has hit on 12 of 13 conversion tries out of theisman's hold to give the redskins the lead he's got it we set up in the pregame bob the uh, Sterling performance in the past by Joe Washington against the New England Patriots. And once again, you'll see from behind Joe Theismann, he waits for Joe Washington. He's his only receiver. He beats Mike Hawkins, and when you put linebackers on running backs, that's exactly what's supposed to happen offensively. They've got to have help for those linebackers on people like Joe Washington. He'll kill them all day. Washington's third touchdown of the year, two on passers, one running. The scoring drive, they went 83 yards in nine plays, consumed five minutes and 25 seconds before Theismann to Washington for 13 yards capped it off, and the Mosley PAT gives them their first lead at 7-6, 13 ticks remaining on the first quarter clock. Now you miss opportunities, and they come back to haunt you. New England inside the, what, 10-yard line twice already in the first quarter, and all they come out with is six points. And nowadays in the NFL, you cannot give an opponent uh, any room to breathe. And that's two missed scoring opportunities, and Washington has taken advantage of their only one. Mark Mosley, at 33 years of age, in his 10th season out of Stephen F. Austin, some contend that he has lost a bit in that leg. He is perhaps not the long-range field goal kicker that he once was. Some people say, too, that he puts on a 13 pair of socks under his shoe and laces his shoe so tight that by the third quarter he cannot feel his foot. Maybe if he well, loses a little uh, yardage. Look at the right leg yeah. compared to the left. Yeah, just put on another pair, a couple of pair of socks. It'll add a few more yards to the distance. On a day like this, you and I could use six or seven pairs at least. Tony Collins is the deep man. It bounces off Andy Johnson, who then picks it up. Flag flies out near the 20-yard line. That was Keith Lee. You're right, Keith Lee. Number 22. Special teams nowadays are very, very important. There's Jarris White, 45. Watch 87. Lynn Dawson behind him. I think we have the penalty coming up. A block in the back. I would that say is, that was rather obvious. That's 15 yards. There's no reason for that kind of block. If you can't get in a guy's way, Legally, there is no reason to make that block, but in defense of Lynn Dawson, he's a very young gentleman, and uh, that's part of what you learn in the NFL. 
Lynn Dawson, L-I-N-N, not to be confused with our own Lynn Dawson. He never played special teams. Illegal block above the waist from behind. Number 87 by the kickers. It's first and 10. Cost them half the distance to the goal line in this situation. And that's not what you're looking for on a rainy day. You want as good a field position as you can possibly muster all day long. And mental mistakes like that, and that is a mental mistake. He knew it was going to be a clip. He was just hoping the official wouldn't see him. This will be the last play of the first quarter from the nine-yard line of New England. Pass trail at 7-6. In motion, Harold Jackson. The fake. Swing it to the sideline. Stanley uh -oh. Morgan uh -oh. his first catch. Blockers out in front of him, and Morgan churns it upfield out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. So a 23-yard gain on the quarter's last play. And as the rain continues to pour down, our score at the end of 15 minutes at RFK Stadium in Washington, the skin seven, the pack six. That right there is the opponent of both teams today, Bob. It changes your entire perspective of the football game. You might have to throw out an entire offensive game plan if you're Washington or New England today because of that rain. As we start the second quarter, it's first down for the Pats at their 32, and Grogan goes back to the air with time and with his receiver. That should be a catch and then a fumble. Stanley Morgan. Nobody has made any signal as to what it is yet. I got to believe it was a catch and then a fumble. Let's watch it again. They still have not signaled. This is Grogan's fifth completion out of seven passes today. And I believe with the new rules now this year, he's got his feet on the ground. That's a reception, as we were told in the league offices prior to the season. For Morgan, his 21st catch, he's averaging 23 yards per reception and has four touchdown catches. And he has been very consistent in that area through the years. In 79, he averaged 22.8. Last year, 22 yards a catch. So he's always been a big play guy. 12 touchdowns in 79, six a year ago, four so far this season. From their own 49 on first down. They give the ball to Calhoun, who gets a very rude how do you do from Dave Butts and Wilbur Young. Two giants of the field. Cleveland continues to lead Baltimore 7-0 there in the first quarter. Tampa Bay out in front of Philly, 7-zip. Eagles suffered their first loss a week ago. Now they trail the Bucks. Atlanta over the Giants, 7-0. Also a first quarter score. Whoa! Cardinals lead Minnesota 10-0 in the first quarter in St. Louis. Vikings have won five in a row. Cardinals specialize in upsetting good teams and looking terrible against everybody else. Collins carries. And only to the 49-yard line of New England, rather of Washington, and it will be third and long. NFC Central battle. Lions and the Packers even up at 7-7 in the first quarter. Wonder if Eric Hipple can come anywhere close to equaling what he did on Monday night against the Bears. Bob, once again, Andy Johnson in the ball game, and the Patriots have gotten very little yardage wide, but good at the tackle spot as you look at the first quarter stats. On the edge to the New England Patriots in time of possession and yards gained. Shotgun, New England. 13-19 to play in the half. Third down and seven. down two we're going to have roughing the passer on number 72 of the Washington Redskins Dexter Manley a rookie out of Oklahoma State so they're going to tack 15 yards on top of it I do believe watch the pass to Hasselbeck who is averaging 18.8 .8 yards per reception far and away the biggest per catch average of any tight end of the league more than five yards better than Ozzie Newsom of Cleveland and Benny Cunningham of Pittsburgh who are next on the list you know Grogan doesn't Great thing there, too. He kind of puts the ball up, realizing that Hasselbeck is open, and let him adjust to the football. 37 yards on the reception. They'll tack on the uh, half the distance to the Rookie goal penalty. The number 72 of the defense, first and 10. I'll tell you why that penalty is called, too. It wasn't a late hit, but he went for Grogan's hit. And that is a no-no in the NFL nowadays. It was that arm across the chin, and that's why they called the penalty. And they nailed Dexter Manley, the rookie from Oklahoma. For Hasselbeck, by the way, the 23rd reception of the season for him, a big year in his career as he replaces the retired Russ Francis. 
first and goal from the six. They give it to Collins. Collins, the rookie, is inside the five. He is to the goal line, and he is in there for the touchdown. Gary Petz, playing in place of the injured Bob Kreider, threw the key block, and Collins didn't need much more help than that. Bob, well, I want to tell you, that was awful easy for New England. Uh, this Washington Redskins defense supposedly is an excellent defense against the run. You see Tatupu, 30 with a good block on Dusik. It kind of captures the corner. Petz kicks the guy out, and Collins runs up underneath with that reckless abandon that all coaches are trying to find. Now seven carries, 32 yards, and a touchdown for Collins, and they're on the board again. The fifth touchdown for Collins in his rookie season. He was the Pats' number two draft choice out of East Carolina. John Smith has Kavanaugh the snap and they can't even get away a pass attempt Monty Coleman number 51 all over Kavanaugh and so we've got a 12-7 game normally a very sure-handed Matt Kavanaugh but that ball is kind of snapped into his stomach and he just couldn't get the ball John Smith does a smart thing get the heck out of the way he can't play with those big fellas but that's another missed opportunity. I had a coach once who told me that if you missed that extra point, it was like nullifying the touchdown. Not quite, but for effect, he may be true. <laughs> what coach was that? I'm not going to mention his name. 12-7, New England. And the extra point, which is usually all but automatic, is not any such thing on a day like this, where both the footing and the handle on the ball are very unsure. John Smith getting set to kick off. Go ahead, oh, Interesting that that's the uh, second extra point that John Smith has missed this year. The Patriot drive covered 91 yards in just two minutes and eight seconds. Six plays culminated by the six-yard scoring run by Tony Collins. But big plays included a pass and run by Stanley Morgan that got them out of a hole at the nine-yard line and the bond to Don Hasselbeck just before the touchdown. This team has historically, the New England Patriots, been a big play team. They always seem to come up with big plays, no matter what the weather is or who the opponent is. Again, they kick it short. And again, they have trouble finding the handle. Otis Wansley gets out across the 30-yard line after eventually picking it up. Bob Golick was there to stop it. Decent field position now for the Washington Redskins. And I would imagine, once again, they'll feature Joe Washington. No reason not to. The Patriots, throughout the season, have been giving up huge chunks of yardage on the ground. Although last week, they did hold the Oilers' Earl Campbell to under 90, which is a respectable showing against him. In motion, Art Monk. Reagan's carries out across the 35 with Mike Hawkins and Ray Hamilton wrapped around it. And so far, Terry Metcalf, starting his first game at wide receiver, has not been a factor in this football game. John Reagan's 7,147 career yards prior to today's game, putting him ninth on the all-time list. He's 127 yards behind Leroy Kelly. Brown's great, who ranks number eight. He is third among active NFL backs behind Franco Harris and Walter Payton. He was better known for his Mohawk haircuts than for the yardage he gained, unfortunately, in his career with the Jets. Joe Washington turns the corner, and Washington is across the 40-yard line and near the first down, very close to the stick as he's shoved out. Well, you know, we came into this ballgame, Bob, and we everybody was saying that the uh, the Washington Redskins lacked a big play offense. Well, so far they've displayed, uh, I think, a fair amount of big plays. Primarily Art Monk and Joe Washington, but nevertheless, they're getting the ball down the field. And you see the speed and the quickness of this little guy. Not big at all. He really takes some abuse out there. But he sticks his head in. Look at that block on Sanford. Mm. And the measurement. They got the first down by about half the length of the football. You know, Bob, Joe Gibbs was uh, known at San Diego, known at Tampa, and known at St. Louis as a wide-open type of football coach. In the last couple of three weeks, he's been accused by Washington Redskins fans of turning conservative. Uh, today, with reverses and with swing passes and with uh, screens, certainly a very wide-open offense so far. Ron Earhart along the sideline. As we watched the replay on the last run by Washington, looked like the veteran Ron Saul threw a crucial block. 
flags fly as Riggins goes down in a hurry. When you're six feet four inches tall and 263 pounds wearing a red jersey, it's hard to disguise an offsides. Julius Adams a little premature on the snap of the ball. I think just about anybody could pick up this offsides. Here's Julius Adams. Number 85 on the defense. Still first down. So it becomes first and five at the Redskin 49-yard line. 12 minutes, 11 seconds to play first half. The Patriots lead it by a score of 12 to 7. This is a down that Feisman might want to play with. Now he keeps it on Whoa, the ground. Oh, yes, he does. They go with the flea flicker. But they've got this covered. Art Monk was double covered. And while the ball was in the air, I half expected Rick Sanford to intercept it. That didn't fool anybody. Both Sanford and Claiborne back there in coverage. And as a matter of fact, the receiver on the other side of the field was more open than this guy was. I mean, this is really forcing it in there. Heisman's going to throw it no matter what. And Art Monk was covered and covered well. And you're right. That ball wasn't thrown well. Got an end over end and therefore took some of the distance away from it. Mm, close. So it's second and five. as Virgil say in motion is Ricky Thompson and for a yard and maybe two John Riggins Mike Hawkins left outside linebacker with the stop all right now you cue Joe Washington third down and about four a little swing pass maybe the same pass that they scored on they still continue to uh, cover Joe Washington and those backs out of the backfield with linebackers that play is going to be there all day Roland James has checked in as the nickelback Third and four from midfield. Okay, apparently they're now going to put defensive backs on those receivers out of the backfield, taking no chances the New England Patriots are. Art Monk wide to the left. Virgil Say is wide to the right. There's Rich Castor, who apparently is okay, breaking out in motion. Two tight ends with Don Warren also in there. Theismann in big trouble, and down he goes. The first Patriots sack of the day belongs to Ray Hamilton with some help from Tony McGee. Uh, now I have a feeling that what they're going to do, the Redskins all day long, is when they're not using Joe Washington, use him as a decoy. Here, I believe he's faking the screen to draw a linebacker. He's even there for a little pass protection, but there was nobody open. And Sugar Bear, along with Tony the Sack McGee and Julius Adams, smothered Joe Tyson. Morgan drops back deep. Connell the kick. Got off a 46-yarder last time. This is a high spiral. And Morgan again is inside the 15-yard line. Trying to turn the corner on the right side and won't do it. Well, the last time the Patriots had the ball, they were in even worse shape at their own nine. They went 91 for a touch. This time, they take over deep in their own. It's the Battle of the Big Apple when Richard Todd and the New York Jets take on the New York Giants, a showdown for bragging rights in New York City. Plus, Brian Snipe keys the battling Browns against the Buffalo Bills and Captain Fouts pilots Air Coriel against Kansas City next Sunday. As the downpour continues at RFK, we should point out that this is a natural surface field and among the very best in the NFL, Trump. Great to play on. I think it's his pres prescription athletic turf from right. Purdue. The stuff that they put in the... Uh, Orange Bowl in Miami, and it drains and drains quickly. The Patriots worked out on natural surface this week in preparation for the game because of he's open. Throw it. Official surface. Andy Johnson. I don't believe he caught that ball. He, Bob, I'll tell you what. He was open five yards earlier. Uh, I, maybe it's the heaviness of the football, but Andy Johnson was open five yards earlier, and I'm not so sure if he hadn't caught the ball then or if Grogan would have been able to put it or thread the needle, as they say. Now watch, he kind of gets somebody in his face, and he can't really put any juice on the football, but an excellent reception by a college quarterback. He either throws it or catches it. He doesn't run with it very much. They got 27 yards on it. Out to the 42. Tony Collins for three yards. Carl Lorch makes the stop. 
They're going to that right side, trying to follow the blocks of Pets and Shelby Jordan. Well, normally, they don't favor an offensive lineman, particularly. They may look at a defensive lineman, and if Lorch, the defensive end, is taking an outside rush or something, they'll try to get up underneath it. Dusik, I might mention, too, is coming back from a very, very bad shoulder injury, so he may not be playing at 100%. That's why they, that's why they choose that side, too. Morgan wide left. Jackson in motion. Hasselbeck, the tight end on the right side. On second down and seven. Again that side. Vegas Ferguson, not too much. And the Cardinals increase their lead over the Vikings to 13 nothing. Now they're in the second quarter in St. Louis. Jim Hart has a certain amount of magic against certain teams, does he not, Bob? Dallas, especially through the years. Yeah. Against these Redskins, he's been very effective. That's As a 30. matter of fact, the Cardinals beat them 40-30 earlier this year. At 37 years old, Jim Hart can still throw the football. Once again, Andy Johnson in the offensive backfield of the New England Patriots. Collins and Johnson are the setbacks out of the shotgun on third down and five. Brogan again pumps long. Stanley Morgan's got it. Tumbles down at the 10-yard line. There's a flag, though, near the line of scrimmage. That's in the offensive backfield, and I have a feeling it's going to be holding. Red Cash and talking it over with the line judge, Neil Gareb, and it is holding, and they'll bring it back. Uh, even though they've got to uh, call the play back, I want to tell you that the New England Patriot receivers are eating up the Washington Redskins cornerbacks, Joe Lavender and Lamar Parrish, and those are two guys that were Pro Bowl for performers last year. Morgan is, has gotten him beat. That was an excellent throw by Steve Grogan. The Redskins have allowed only 44% of their opponents' passes to be completed against them this year, which is the best mark in the NFL, but the Patriots haven't respected that much. Oh, number 62 of the offense, it's still third down. Dwight Wheeler is caught holding. There he is, third-year man out of Tennessee State. We're down to 8.33 to play in the first half. New England has been penalized three times in the first half for 30 backward yards. Bob, Andy Johnson still in there. I would be a bit surprised to try to come with a very similar playoff, the same action, shotgun. Third down and 15. Morgan left, Jackson right. Dexter Manley and Wilbur Young sandwiching him. A punt is upcoming, but let's check with NFL 81 in New York, and here's Brian. Okay, Bob, out in Cleveland, the Browns have scored again against the Colts. This is Brian Seid, ninth touchdown pass of the year. A 22-yarder to Greg Pruitt has Cleveland in front 14-0 as they near the half. Bob? Okay, Brian. Clock moving. Eight minutes, 15 seconds to play. His first NFL punt. Rich Camarillo, rookie out of Washington, cut during training camp this year by the pass, brought back when two other punters failed. Mike Nelms handles it. And Nelms, who made the Pro Bowl as a kick return man as a rookie last year, gets out near the 40-yard line. One of the things that everybody complains about this shotgun offense is the snap as it starts. Look at it rolling back on the ground. Grogan has the presence of mind to get the ball first before he does anything else. And then he's got nothing else to do with it but eat it. That's a sack by the Washington Redskins and the first one of the day. They now have the ball. Trump, I don't know if the rain is easing a bit or if we're just getting used to it. I don't know, but I noticed two more Washington Redskins going to the locker room with injuries. Rich Castor is one. I can't make out the other one. Play fake on first down from the 38. Feisman keeps it long and broke it up by Keith Lee, number 22, intended for Virgil Say. Say, the first-year man out of Troy State, little speedster, 5'8 and 170. Keith Lee starting at that corner in place of Mike Haynes, sidelined for a few more weeks with the collapsed lung. And last week, didn't know until 30 minutes before the game that he was going to start. All he had was five tackles, one assist, and an interception. And Ron Earhart, who does not normally give out game balls, gave one to uh, Keith Lee on the defense and Mosey Tatupu on the offense for that for that uh, bulldozer type of running head in the 64 yards he gained. Evidently, strong 
Baltimore safety Tony Peters of the Redskins has a broken nose and he has gone to the locker room. In motion, Art Monk on second and ten. They give it to Riggins. Two, maybe three, right up the middle. Ray Hamilton, John Zamberlin, among others there. Let's pause briefly for station identification on the NBC television network. WRC-TV, Channel 4, Washington, D.C. Third down and seven upcoming from the 41-yard line. By the way, you should note that Rich Camarillo's punt just before our last commercial break carried 40 yards, so a decent effort. First try as an NFL punter. I have an idea for the New England Patriots first draft pick, 1982. Feisman heaving it as he's hit, and it's broken up down there as much by the receiver as by the defender. Claiborne had a good crack at the interception, and Virgil say think was more intent on just knocking it away from him than catching the ball himself. I don't want to jump on Joe Theismann's case here, but it seemed to me that he was uh, intent on going only to one guy, and that was Virgil C. On the other side of the field, Joe Washington was wide open as you look at the blitz there, who uh, disrupted the pass reception a little bit, or the pass throw, until he felt it, but, but uh, Joe Washington was wide open. He, he was only going to one receiver, and you can't do that in the NFL. you got to look around. yard line so a good return by Stanley Morgan no flags so it'll stand you'll watch the he dodges that first man and then he does a most of it on his own this guy the road runner has great speed watch him go around the corner here that's a 40 yard punt but about a 25 yard return this is Brian Gumbel in New York. In Cleveland, Brian Seip has once again taken advantage of a bad Baltimore defense. Seip throwing this one up from 40 yards away, and Dave Logan brings it in between two defenders to give the Browns a 21-0 lead as they near the half. Let's go back to Bob Costas. Mike Connell kicked it 41 way. Stanley Morgan brought it back 22 the other, setting up first and 10 at the 41-yard line of the Patriots. New England leads it 12-7, exactly seven minutes to play in the first half. think they do. Tony Collins is pointing the other way for the Patriots. The striped shirts are the only ones that uh, count in this situation, and it does look like New England got the ball back. They did. Watch Perry Brooks and Dave Butts get in on the stop, and the ball pops free of Tatupu's grasp. 21, Mike Nelms, I think, was the guy who was in there and kind of threw himself at the ball, caused the fumble out to a pickup of two out to the 43 second down eight Woo. Don Calhoun going absolutely nowhere Matt Mendenhall number 76 and Brooks number 69 there that play had disaster written all over it obviously a predetermined move by the defensive lineman messed it up once again, we have Tatupu in the backfield for the Patriots, and guess who? Andy Johnson on third down 12. Jarris White, number 45, is in as the nickel back for the Redskins. 5.55 to play. Second quarter. And the shotgun, Grogan. Over the middle and a leaping catch by Hasselback, who turns in another big play down at the 42-yard line of the Skins. I can tell you is that they are beating up on Mark Murphy. I don't believe he is used to coverage now with Tony Peters out with that broken nose. He's got to cover the tight end. He's not used to it. Although Washington does use a, does use an awful lot of zone coverage when they've got five defensive backs. Rogan with plenty of time on that occasion out of the shotgun two weeks ago as they were playing catch up and had to throw in almost every play. The Jets teed off and sacked Patriot quarterbacks eight times. Last week against Houston, no sacks. So far in this first half, Grogan has not been sacked. Jackson in motion. Grogan with a first down pass. Hasselbeck. Again he goes wrong. Hasselbeck. Can't get there. That was Nelms on the coverage, and he is primarily a kickoff return man. With Tony Peters out now, Washington is going to, they're going to have to have a, a big play now by, uh, or a big afternoon by Mike Nelms. 8 of 11, 187 yards now for Steve Grogan. 
Peters sideline with a broken nose sustained a few minutes ago. Mike Nelms, primarily a kick return man, as you noted, Trump. Earlier this season, he had a broken thumb, so he's not 100%. Nelms did play safety in Canada. I'm not sure that the... I don't know what a safety in Canada does. They've got 12 guys on the field out there. He may be assigned to uh, get guards, the hot dogs. He guards against the Rouge. Yeah, maybe The so. all-important Rouge. Second down and 10 from the 41. They give it to Collins. Collins slips through a tiny hole and turns it into a decent play. Mark Murphy, the free safety with the tackle, number 29. And once again, running that right side. They've obviously got Lorch's number and Dusek's number. They're doing an excellent job over there, Gary Betts and Shelby Jordan, of just capturing the corner so that Collins can turn up field. down at the 31 yard line Collins has carried nine times for 45 yards the two rookie running backs who rank ahead of him are George Rogers of New Orleans and the guy we saw last week in Kansas City Joe Delaney of the Chiefs Tatupu. down to about the 27 yard line for a gain of four on first down Tough cookie to Tupu is. Last week, he averaged, what, six by 64 yards on six carries, and they had one carry. There it is. There's his average for the season, 6.6. .6. They had one carry where the people in New England counted seven broken tackles that he had. I saw the tape on that. An incredible run. Didn't score on it. Went 43 yards and was just shedding tacklers as he went left and right. He was carried twice today for a total of six. Second and six from the 27. Check it, Tony Collins. My mistake, Tony Collins carried close to the first down. This is going to be very encouraging for the New England Patriots. They've had one drive of 91 yards. They've now had the ball for an extended period of time and uh, driven uh, from what? About their 41-yard uh, line. They're keeping the ball, keeping possession, and if the other team doesn't have the ball, they're certainly not going to score. Third and a short two. Clock running, 338 left. That was his 10th carry for 49 yards. Here's Grogan with nearly 200 passing yards. Fumbles. Oh, big play. This is not a chip shot field goal by any means. Grogan unable to handle the snap and has to fall on it with Matt Mendenhall on top of him. And you'll see this is totally on Steve Grogan. When he pulls out, he appears to... Uh, Hog Hanna runs into him, bumps his elbow, number 73, and Grogan does the right thing and just get on the ball. My question to you right here. If it's too far to kick the field goal, do you go for it? I say yes. So does Ron Earhart because Grogan's still in there. All right, good. Andy Johnson wants to get in there. If nothing else, a great decoy. Probably go with the shotgun. Here we go. Everybody... Everybody has been open, or a lot of people have been open for New England so far in this first half when it comes to this shotgun situation. So Grogan goes to the sideline as the Patriots use their first time out. They still have two remaining. 3.07 to play in the half, and it's 12-7 bats. Well, the Patriots thought about it, and now they decide to go for the field goal. And I think it's a questionable call. This, provided they don't fake it, is a 46-yard attempt, and the last time they tried a placement for a point after, Kavanaugh couldn't handle the slippery ball, and they never got it off. Smith has hit two, one from 25, one from 23, punches this one uh, through there. Well, that's why Ron Earhart makes the big money. He I take running. it all back. <laughs> a thousand pardons, Mr. Earhart, sir. John Smith from 46, piece of cake all the way. 3.02 left in the half. It's 15-7, New England. This is Brian Gumblin, New York. In Cleveland, the Colts, who have lost six in a row, have jumped on the board against the Browns. Burt Jones, Curtis Dickey, four yards. Colts now trailing 21-7 as they near the half. Let's go back to RFK, Bob Costas and Bob Trumpy. Thank you, Brian Gumble. And this man, John Smith, is three for three in this first half on his field goal attempts. And for the season, has hit eight out of 12 between 40 and 49 yards. And that last one carried 46. He's now two of three this year. There isn't enough credit given to the people who snap the football and the people who hold the football, too. There are a great many kickers who uh, go through an awful lot of holders and snappers just because they don't feel comfortable with them. But Kavanaugh is an excellent holder, has great hands, and that gives that 
a little extra confidence to John Smith. Tony Frisch ranks number one, and John Smith number two among active NFL place kickers in percentage field goal accuracy. They're each up around 70% for their careers in the high 60s. I still don't understand the dynamics of how they kick the football side, Mike. Well, there are only two straight-on kickers left in the entire league. One of them here today, Mosley of Washington. The other is Dan Meyer of Minnesota. Mike Nelms out to about the 33-yard line with two minutes and 52 seconds remaining. And on the subject of place kicking, let's take a look at John Smith's 46-yard field goal. Watch this placement, and watch the way he hits the ball. It's kind of a little chip shot, it looks like. And then the most characteristic part of sidewind kickers is the English, the body English that they all apply to the kick, and yes, it goes through three points, 15 to seven. Washington's got to feel very good. They're still in this ballgame. John Smith from Southampton, England. The first NFL game he ever saw, he played in. Heisman to the air with 2.51 left. Right over the middle of Don Warren, and his tight end makes his first catch of the afternoon. Don Warren. John Zamberlin there to stop him, number 54. Well, we made a big deal out of Terry Metcalf starting as a receiver. Seen no uh, evidence of him anywhere so far today. He was on the field for a few players, but they haven't gone to him. The last couple of weeks, he's played virtually not at all after having a terrible game fumble-wise against San Francisco. The 49ers belted the Redskins out on the West Coast. Washington. Joe Washington out of bounds. That stops the clock. He's near the 45-yard line. With 2.12 left in the half, the Redskins have all three of their timeouts left. The Patriots have two. They get the first down. Seven. New England leads it. Ryan Gumbel will be with you shortly. Highlights, scores, stories from around the NFL as we reach the halfway point. This is week eight of the 16-game campaign. Season is that when that receiver catches the ball, when both feet hit the ground, it is then a reception. And even though that, even though Metcalf was hit, and it was questionable as to whether or not he was coming down, Ray Claiborne, his opposite number for New England, I believe that's a legal reception. Well, I got to tell you, Trump, that is really cutting it close. Well, but that's that's what the uh, officials in New York told us. Now watch this. If his second foot comes down. It's a reception. Let's see if we can see. One, two, his foot's on the ground. That's a reception by the rules of the NFL. And the Patriots come up with the football. The second Washington turnover in the first half. Collins carries. A couple of yards out across the 45, and we reach the two-minute warning. And Bob, on that particular play, Steve Grogan carried out a fake that had the appearance of a bootleg. Last week he did it against Houston and it worked. He may be setting up uh, another bootleg here for the New England Patriots. For the Redskins, the 23rd time they have fumbled this year and they have lost 13 of those 23. They have, as we noted earlier, the worst giveaway takeaway ratio in the entire league. Back in a minute. Dave Butts of the Washington Redskins is one of the biggest men in the NFL. He's big in more ways than one. It's been a tradition with the Redskins to always have a Santa Claus, and they needed someone quite large, and I was the natural pick. Hey, Butts, what is this? You moonlighting now? Hey, come on, Herm, give me a break. This is something special for Christmas. I've been Santa Claus for four years, and have enjoyed it ever since I started. You help so many kids from so many different agencies, and this is what United Way has provided a vehicle for us to get out in the community and visit with some of these children. You can hide behind a mustache and a beard, but yet uh, to see the young people, the twinkle in their eye, they just light up when Santa Claus comes. Regardless of uh, what their problem is, it's all forgotten. 
The United Way provides a spirit of Christmas year-round. The many agencies, the many people they help, and that's why I'm happy to be a United Way volunteer. This is Brian Gumbel in New York. Rich Steady and the Denver Broncos have broken a scoreless deadlock with the Bills. Craig Morton to Steve Watson. Watson's 10th touchdown catch of the year has the Broncos in front 7-0. Let's go back to Bob Costas in Washington. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. We saw Steve Watson catch a couple of scoring aerials last week from Craig Morton in the Broncos' 28-14 loss to Kansas City. And that guy just continues to amaze. Yeah, he now has uh, three more touchdowns than he had receptions last season. He's got two of better than 90 yards from Craig Morton this year. But back to the subject at hand, second and seven from just across the 47 of New England. New formation here for New England. 158 left. And the fans continue to indicate their displeasure at the fumble call a moment ago. Grogan is brought down for a massive loss. Big sack. Matt Mendenhall chased him back into a different time zone. <laughs> Certainly took him out of field goal range, didn't he? That was a big sack. There was no doubt about that. You'll see him on Dwight Wheeler. It's a standoff now, but then when 69 of the Washington Redskins gets in there, and that's Perry Brooks that flushes Grogan out of the pocket, and Mendenhall on the sack. Timeout Washington. I'm not sure that's a smart thing to do. I mean, they, they should... Well, it's this third, is 24 upcoming. But this is a big play offense, the New England Patriots. Ah, but more importantly, we've followed boxer Johnny Bump Bumpus through his days as an amateur in the National Golden Gloves and the Olympic Trials. Now as a young pro, he gets a title shot as he fights Willie Rodriguez for the USBA Junior Welterweight Crown next Saturday on Sports World at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Plus, aerial athletes test their skills in the tricky winds of the Sierra Nevada in the National Hang Gliding Championships. Covered by Bob Trumpy, correct? No. Aerial athletes, you say? Aerial Hey, it says it right here. Aerial athletes, folks. That's what we're talking about. All next Saturday on NBC Sports Run. You didn't get that assignment with the aerial athletes? Uh, no. I... No, 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 no. I like my feet squarely on the ground. Ron Earhart with his club in front. 15-7. Each team with two timeouts left. It's third and 24 for the Patriots. At their 31... how many hunters forget that their most important job is to first catch the ball from the center. The first half scoring three field goals by John Smith, 25, 23, and 46 yards for the Patriots, and a six-yard scoring run by Tony Collins after which the snap from center was fumbled and they missed the point after. The Redskins touchdown, Feisman to Joe Washington, mostly hit the PAT, 15-7. The Patriots lead it. Camarillo gets it away as they put a big rush on him. Great punt. Great punt. Good coverage. However, Nelms is able to shake free of it, and Mike Nelms might go all the way. Mike Nelms is gone. I don't believe it's it. It's a touchdown for the Redskins. No flags. Touchdown.
watch this. Sanford got down there. The coverage was good, but once Nelms shook the initial attempt at the tackle by Sanford, he was gone. Camarillo's kick was a beauty, 46 yards. But Nelms' return was something else, you got, 75. You got a feel for the New England Patriots. They have historically had bad punting. They finally get somebody who can kick at 46 yards, and he out kicks his coverage. Mosley for the point after that can bring them to within one, and there it is at 15-14. Metcalf, who a moment ago on the sidelines was a very disconsolate young man after being charged with the fumble. He put on a heck of a rush and nearly blocked that punt by Camarillo. And after that, he got up and threw about the only block that Nelms needed toward the end of his run to spring him all the way for the touchdown. So got two New England Patriots, one of them being the punter, Rich Camarillo. That guy was an all-pro punt returner last year for the Washington Redskins. And obviously... Washington Redskins so far have had the big plays that Joe Gibbs has won. Boy, does that take wind out of your sails if you're the New England Patriots. Mike Nels may have a problem going back to the Pro Bowl in this is second season, the way Leroy Irvin has been playing for the Los Angeles Rams, but on that particular effort, nobody was ever better. Nels, 75 yards for the touchdown. I was going to mention before the punt return, I wondered if the fact that Nelms having to play strong safety because Tony Peters is out with a broken nose had tired him out in I'm certainly glad I didn't say that. Mark Mosley. His right leg looking as if it should belong to Bobo Brazil. <laughs> and his left leg, and his left leg should be... Uh, Owned by who? Mary Tyler Moore or Bob Costas, maybe? With 120 left. Handling the football has been a problem for both clubs, especially on kicks. Smith has kicked several in the intermediate range, which the Redskins have had trouble handling. sure that there was no fumble on that return instead of New England being very comfortably ahead in this first half that sack looms as a very very big play at the end of uh, the last drive for the New England Patriots the Redskins have one timeout left the Pats who have the ball have two remaining 115 on the clock 15 14 the Patriots by one Patriots have not had overwhelming success through the years against NFC competition, despite the fact that they've been a contender for the past several years, most of the time. They're just even, 18 and 18 against the NFC.
Washington. The Redskins will use their final timeout. Yes. Let's watch the last play again. We have 42 seconds remaining now in the half. Uh, that's the second sack for the New England Patriots. This is a, a designed play to try to move the pocket out a little bit. Obviously looking for somebody over there on the sideline, but McGee comes from the other side of the field to uh, make the sack. Here's Terry Metcalf. He's there to help block on Julius Adams. And he doesn't do what you would call your sterling job. But then he is known <laughs> as a pass receiver and a punt returner and not a blocker. There, if he was, they give him a 60 or a 70 or a 50 number, right? Miami and Dallas upcoming later today on NBC. The Dolphins through the years under Don Shula, 31 and 5 against the NFC. The best interconference record of any team in the league. Dallas has the best NFC record against the guys from the other side. They're 26 and 9. What a great game that's going to be. Cowboys and Dolphins upcoming on NBC. Two great coaches, too. Don Shula, who I believe whenever you do a Miami game, it's always fun to watch the Miami Dolphins because he is so much a part of what's happening on the football field. Washington is back just about to what was the original line of scrimmage after the Alkowitz interception near the 33 yard line. 28 seconds left in the half. Redskins trail by one. Clock's going to continue to run. Hawkins again on the coverage against Washington. Oh, Washington just made a gigantic mistake. They got closely on the field. as to whether the kick is good. Double zeros show on the clock. It's one of two things. New England's got 12 guys on the field, possibly. The illegal procedure, it's got to be New England's got 12 guys on the field. I can't believe that Washington managed that. I, what I don't understand is, it was third down. Let's see here. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Let's be fair here. It was fourth down. They're picking up the flag now. The last play Trump it was fourth down so they had no option to throw the ball out of bounds they had to try and get the field goal team on the field so or they did not make a mistake or get the first down there's nothing wrong with trying to get the first down Trump. They had 12 on the field. That gives them five extra yards. Plus, they can set this up without rushing. But, Bob, I got to tell you, I have never seen nor have I ever heard of any team that, that changes an offensive team to the field goal team in a matter of 12 seconds. Theismann called for the field goal team to come on. I've never seen it. Mostly out of Theismann's hold of 40. Oh, oh, oh. blocked. <laughs> and the half is over. Richard Bishop, number 64, is the guy who got through there and blocked it. Plenty of excitement, but no points. We played 30 minutes at Rainy RFK Stadium. It's 15-14 Patriots. Well, Trump, a wonderfully elaborate explanation of what took place toward the end of the first half is all for naught, because actually my first assumption that the Mosley field goal was no good was correct all along. Then we got two different indications from the field. The officials never did give a signal as to whether it was good or not. We got two indications from the field that the kick was good, but that the play had been stopped before they officially got it underway because of the 12 men on the field call. So your explanation of that situation, if indeed it had been true, was completely accurate. However, to be technically correct and also to send all of our listeners now off to the sanitarium, the <laughs> kick was actually under the crossbar and no good. So in any event, even had the Redskins had the option of accepting the penalty, they would have. They would have had to have kicked it again. The kick was blocked. Well, the important Holmes. thing is the score is Patriots 15, the Redskins 14. And look at the dominance by the Patriots in the first half. The two turnovers by the Washington Redskins may be the biggest indicator of the score so far. And Washington has got to feel very good. They're not doing great things offensively. The kickoff or the punt return by Mike Nelms is the biggest play they've had so far today. And they got to feel down one point with the way that New England so far offensively has dominated them. 
that uh, they're in the game. Mark Mosley, who is second among active NFL kickers in total career field goals. Jan Stenerud, by far and away the leader, and Stenerud having another outstanding season at this stage of his career. Mosley has 176 for his career. Bob, I might mention, too, you did a great job in explaining our gigantic mistake at halftime. Or I should say my mistake. You were right that the field goal was not good. And Mosley to kick off to start the second half. Metcalf was in on the tackle, pushing him out of bounds. I'll tell you something about Terry Metcalf. He has had a lot of peaks and valleys in his career. He obviously has had some fantastic seasons in the past with the Cardinals. He has also had trouble throughout his career with fumbling, and it appears very often that those fumbles come at crucial times. But he never stops trying. He is one of the hardest workers in the NFL, and he will come back from a mistake with a super effort more often than not. This is the first play from scrimmage in the second half. The Patriots have a one-point lead at 15-14. They give the ball to Collins. And Tony Collins out across the 25-yard line and close to the first down. And they go by right back to what's been so successful for him in the first half, and that is running by behind uh, Pets, running behind Shelby Jordan, and picking on that left defensive side of the Washington Redskins. This one's close enough to measure, and the chains come out. It has been raining since the very start of the game. There appears to be some small let-up. It is not quite as heavy as earlier, but it's still a big factor, and they're that much short of the first down, second down upcoming. And even though this field is that prescription athletic turf, it drains very well, it, it does make your feet heavy in this. And the, the footing, obviously, is going to be very bad. Collins now 13 carries, 59 yards. Both teams have been able to throw the ball rather well, and I'm somewhat surprised at that. Grogan, as a matter of fact, threw for nearly 200 yards in the first half alone. He had a half against the Jets two weeks ago, actually less than a half. He replaced Kavanaugh after the second half had begun and threw for more than 300 yards as the Pats almost pulled it out against the Jets. Tatupu smack into Dave Butts. And let's see where they'll spot this. Beth Butts is a defense by himself. Look at the size of this guy. He is 6'7", 295 pounds, taking on Gary Petz, who is replacing Bob Kreider. And he just sheds the blocker, Petz, and makes the tackle on Tatupu for no gain. Butts, the fifth player taken in the first round back in 1973. The St. Louis Cardinals selected him on that occasion. The player taken immediately before him, the fourth selection of that first round, was the Patriots' John Hanna. Wasn't that also the year that Jerry Sizemore was taken? The very same year. Yeah. Offensive tackle of the Philadelphia Eagles. Good year for big people. Sam Cunningham now is making his first appearance. Cunningham has been sidelined with a hamstring pull and missed the last two Patriot games entirely. This coming just a few weeks after he finally re-signed after sitting out all the 1980 season and then an injury sidelines him. This is a much different offense now. Bill Lankitis comes in at center. Pete Rock goes to the wing. They got big people in there in the wing to do it right now. Hasselbeck and Dawson also in, and they keep the ball with Brogan on the sneak, apparently for the first down. Here's an interesting situation. Len Kytus, in his 14th year out of Penn State, was the starting center for eons. He has lost that position to Pete Brock. But when they go with Len Kytus and Brock in the lineup at the same time, Brock has to report to the officials because he sets up as a tight end wearing number 58. And then he must go out of the game for at least one play before he can come back to play center. So Len Kytus has to stay in and snap on first down.
first half, too, Mark Murphy has been so picked on. And you just see this ball float a little bit by Steve Grogan. Not really thrown very, very hard. And that really is from the uh, from the wetness, I think, of the football. And Murphy picks it up and has a good return. Now Washington with good field position. And New England's 31 and a half yard line, first and 10. For Murphy, his second interception of the season. Got up and made a good return on top of it. He's going to throw it. He might. No, he keeps it and goes nowhere. Joe Washington. I do believe that was set up for him to throw it because no offensive lineman went down the field for a block. But then Art Monk, 81, was covered. Joe Washington had no choice in the matter. Tackled by Rick Sanford, I believe, on the play. They lose seven, second down and 17. Ball pushed back to the 38-yard line. 12 minutes, 30 seconds to play, third quarter. The Patriots 15, the Redskins 14. Now Washington with three wide receivers. Monk, Say, and Thompson, along with Terry Metcalf in the backfield. Metcalf and Washington each in there, so they have, in effect, five guys who are excellent pass receivers in the lineup at the same time. Again, the play that they scored the touchdown on. It's a circle pattern. You'll see Washington with coverage by Matthews over the middle. That's the exact same play they scored the touchdown on. And Washington does a good job to at least get close enough for. Yeah, he did get a first down. Great play, Joe Washington. Five catches, 68 yards. Boy, that guy is. He has really been a thorn in New England side over the years. Got almost exactly the 17 yards they needed for a first down at the 21 yard line. Tim Fox with him for a gain of about three to the 18 yard line. John Riggins, who gained over 1,100 yards in 1979, then decided that he'd sit out 1980 rather than accept the original contract terms offered to him. When he came back, he had a great line with the Washington Redskins. I think he said he was broke and ready to play football again. Finding some way to spend that money out in Kansas. Because he has collected more than his share down through the years, Joe Washington. Stopped by Mike Hawkins and stopped in a hurry. Well, now New England's defense is certainly stiffening here. They've got Steve Clark in at a defensive end. Playing four defensive linemen, and here comes the sack back. Sugar Bear Hamilton along with McGee try to put pe pressure on Joe Theismann. Roland James also in as the nickelback on third down and six from the 17-yard line. 10.45 remaining in the third quarter. Theismann is 7 of 13 for 96 yards thus far. coverage. That was at best a mediocre throw by Joe Feisman made Rick Walker spin completely around to try to make the reception. And that's not an easy one to make. Mark Mosley on. The last time he was on the field it was like a fire drill out there. <laughs> yes it was and we described it as a fire drill too. <laughs>
State makes the tackle, number 56. You know, Bob, I wonder, I, I noticed that Tony Collins has those gloves on, and every time you get up off the ground, you got to put your hands on the ground, and I wonder if those gloves are wet now and soaked through, and if so, your hands then become very, very slick. It is still raining somewhat here, and it's obviously very damp, and the footballs are getting heavier and heavier. Well, that should be an easy enough problem to remedy with a new pair of gloves. I would gloves, think so, yes. You think? I would think so. Timeout with 10-16 left in the third, and the skin's up by two. And the weather continues without any let-up, and Otis Wansley adds his name to the list of those in sick bay for the Washington Redskins as he hobbles off. He's the third one to hobble off today, Rich Caster. Tony Peters out with a broken nose, and now Wansley. From the 11-yard line of New England, the Patriots, who have frequently faced bad field position today and often have conquered it. Tony Collins stopped for a loss of one. It's time to check with NFL 81 in New York. As we have 10 minutes left in the third quarter here, here's Byron Day in New York. Bob, thanks a lot. Watch this play. I don't think you'll see this one again this season. Mike Wood trying a field goal for the Colts. The ball is blocked by Cleveland. It rolls around on the ground. Reese McCall picks it up. He can't go anywhere with it. He laterals back to Robert Pratt. Pratt has nowhere to go. He laterals back to the holder. Greg Landry Landry runs it in for a 20-yard touchdown run. That must be his first touchdown of the year. The Colts still behind by 14. Bob? Well, Trump, you thought we had problems with Mosley's field goal attempt toward the end of the first half. How would you have liked to have tried to describe that play, which Byron Day just updated us just, on? Just a basic play that they have in the playbook for uh, field goals that are blocked. Stanley Morgan latches on to the pass from Steve Grogan, and here it is again. This is underneath coverage trying it instead of going on top and Grogan just kind of standing there nonchalantly throws it to Stanley Morgan. That's one of the things that I don't believe the New England Patriots do enough and that is throw underneath the coverage as opposed to always going for the bomb. Well this leaves them now with third down and a long one. Bill Lentitis has come into the game. They move Brock out as a tight end. They give it to Cunningham. He got it. He got it with second effort. Flag There's a flag on, down. On the play immediately. Normally when it's thrown like that, you either don't have enough offensive linemen on the line of scrimmage or you have uh, offsides New England. Or you have offsides New England. Or you have offsides Washington. What we do have is a station break on the NBC television network. WRC-TV, Channel 4, Washington, D.C. Okay, eight minutes and 42 seconds to play. Third quarter. The play is negated. Third down and six as they walk it back five. The ball sitting at the 15-yard line of the Patriots. Neil Alkowitz along the sideline wearing number 52. It was his interception late in the first half which set up the near heroics by Theismann and Mosley, all for naught, however. As the field goal was eventually blocked, Brogan, as you can see, already has a 200-yard-plus day. Out of the shotgun on third down. Plenty of time for Grogan. Got a receiver. Hasselbeck, another clutch catch. And a first down for the Patriots at the 34-yard line. Well, he has made some big catches for this football team through the first seven weeks of the season. Good concentration on the football. Knows he's going to get hit. Also, great protection. Watch Jarris White, number 45, kind of knock his helmet a little bit and you'll tend to lose consciousness for a few minutes. Hopefully Don Hasselbeck is all right, but anyway, it's good enough for a first down. And as they tend to Hasselbeck down on the field, we'll take a break and return to RFK after this. Evidently, Don Hasselbeck is okay. He has caught three passes for 76 yards, three of the 11 Grogan completions. Grogan, 11 of 16, 225 the yardage total. He has, however, had a couple intercepted. I think Hasselbeck got his bell rung when I've been in that situation. Not only do you not remember what you're doing, but where you are. Moving down toward eight minutes to play, third quarter. First and ten from the 34. Grogan right back to the air again with good protection, and he throws it too high for Andy Johnson, who was open. And Steve is mad at himself, too. He 
did overthrow Andy Johnson ever so slightly. That's not a bad day. Those two interceptions were certainly big plays. He has made mention in the last couple of weeks or so that if he throws an interception, he used to pout about it. He'd get very upset now. Uh, it doesn't really bother him that much. John Hanna goes off to the sideline. That's certainly a big blow for the New England Patriots. Don't know the extent of that injury. Lenkaitis comes back in, so they'll move Brock out to guard, and Lenkaitis will play center. Trump, the Patriots contend even at two and five with six division games left, but they still have a crack at the playoffs. Is that wishful thinking? Uh, no, I don't think it's wishful think thinking, but they're down 17-15 right now, and they better straighten that out before they worry about those division opponents. Krogan is going to keep it. Down he goes in an act of self-preservation near the 40-yard line. This will leave them with third down and about five yards to go. It gives us a chance to tell you that this telecast is presented by authority of the NFL. Could you do this now from memory, Trump? No. How many times have you heard this? Uh, every game I've ever been around. Well, listen carefully. Telecast okay. presented by authority of the NFL, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of fill in the home team, Washington Redskins, and the National Football League is prohibited. Will there be a test on that later? If so, you should be able to pass it. Okay. Third down, five. Out of the shotgun. They give the ball to Collins. Tony Collins, close to the first down. Loses Bumble. the football. Who's got it? Washington. You are absolutely correct. On the hit, two by Mike Nels. Stood Tony Collins straight up. You'll see it. Good sweep. And they're still picking on that side. Watch the hit by number 21. Stands him straight up. And hits right on the football, and it's loose. There's Matt Mendenhall on the recovery, number 76. First down, Washington, once again, into England territory. That's the third time since the waning moments of the first half that the Patriots have turned the ball over to the Redskins in New England territory. Twice on interceptions and now on the fumble. And as we mentioned early on in the telecast, these are the two worst teams in the NFL in terms of turnovers. And the rain hasn't helped that situation either. It's hard to say which team has been hurt or helped the most by that, however. It's been pretty equal. Carrying the ball is Washington. Can't turn the corner. Spun out of bounds by Mike Hawkins, who had his shirt sleeve. It all began when the Redskins fumbled the opening kickoff. That led to three points by the Patriots, and since then, turnovers have played an important part in the game for both clubs. They lose three, second and 13. 7.02 to play, third quarter. It was 15-14 Patriots at the half. Mark Mosley has hit a field goal early in this third quarter. The skins the lead back at 17-15. Ball at the 46 of New England. That's Walker in motion. Theismann over the middle. Got his man. Catch made by Don Warren is tied in. And Warren is hit and brought down by Bill Matthews, number 53, described by many as the most intelligent player on the Patriots' defensive unit. You know, the chance to uh, really bother the... the the Patriots defense with the field position that Washington has had so far this second half they got to feel like what do we have to do to win this football game or to win any football game we dominate the first half and then all of a sudden the big turnovers and we got our backs to the wall here and Washington is just picking them apart now with two short passes underneath on third and five Ray Hamilton in as a fourth down lineman Feisman connects with Washington Washington turns on the speed Joe Washington might take it in leaps over a tackler at the 10 on Joe Washington along with Mike Hawkins out of the, uh, the defensive linebacker spot. Look at this. There's two linebackers on a guy who runs probably a 4-5-40. That's exactly what's supposed to happen on offense. And once again, Joe Washington is almost single-handedly 
beating up on the New England Patriots today. They ought to acquire Joe Washington just to keep him out of their hair. Monk and Virgil Say are both out to the left side. Now Monk comes in motion. It's first and goal at the seven-yard line. They give it to Reagans. Reagans looking for a hole and finding one and runs into the two-yard line for a pickup of five. Just a big running back who has the presence of mind, the experience to wait back there for the blocks to, to kind of show where the hole is going to be, and then he just picked his way for a good five or six yards. Boy, New England has certainly lost control of this football game, haven't they? Just immediately. They are down by two and in danger of digging a much deeper hole. I believe he's taking time out to get Joe Washington back in the football game. They've got second and goal upcoming from the two-yard line. And as Theismann goes to the sidelines to talk things over with Joe Gibbs, we'll take this break with 4.48 to play in the third quarter. Joe Gibbs wearing the blue headset at 40 years of age, a tough baptismal. In his first year as the head coach of the Redskins, his team off to a one and six start. But right now, knocking on the door, looking to add to their two-point lead. In motion one. Give it to Riggins. John Riggins is close, but evidently not there. Good play by Bill Matthews, 53, and also Mike Hawkins, 59. They made the penetration there to make uh, John Riggins get up off the ground and try to dive for it. You'll see Riggins here, the good submarine man's right there to get in his way. And he's got to jump over, and he's short by probably about the length of the football. So it's third and goal to go from inside the one. Clock is moving. Less than four and a half minutes to play third quarter. A quarter dominated thus far by the Redskins. Again, Riggins. No. Ah, no way. The fans scream go. I think they have to, Trump. You don't want a chip shot field goal here. You want the six. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. You're a one and six football team. You're not playing for the Super Bowl championship. This is the time of the season where you do have to go for it. Once again, a great job of Sanford in there. Not only that, if you don't get it and they take the ball back, if you stop them without a first down, you're in field goal range after the punt anyway. But you do take away half your offense. You can't throw it or they bring it out to the 20, so they must run it. Who has done an excellent job on special teams coverage this afternoon? Oh, 
he'll dry his hands off and Mr. Collins you must hang on to the football. What it does to you mentally as a player is every time you get the ball from the quarterback instead of trying to fight for yardage you're trying to hang on to the football. It, it takes away from your concentration about where the opening in the defensive line of scrimmage is. Don't forget Miami and Dallas coming up as the second part of our doubleheader this afternoon on NBC. In motion is Jackson. The fake and the toss out to Stanley Morgan and nobody's fooled. Joe Lavender right there to nail it. It's a good play to run to get Morgan a little bit of room to jitterbug around but Lavender was all over. You are right. It must have been a rotation that way because Joe Lavender was coming up at the snap of the ball. And uh, he wears glasses. You can see him drying them off there. He's one of the few players in the NFL who plays with glasses. Which has to be a monumental headache on a day like this. They lose one at second and 11 from the 25. Brogan completes it to Jackson. And Harold Jackson with a pickup of perhaps seven. Don Hasselbeck, number 80 of the Patriots, back in the ballgame, clearing the cobwebs. Uh, I don't want to understate the situation, but my goodness, must New England have some time of possession here. Here's Hasselbeck, 80. And uh, Jackson catches the ball underneath. Hasselbeck back to try to get a block. But it still remains third down and now about three. And Andy Johnson comes in, as you might expect. Two minutes and eight seconds to play third quarter. The Patriots were led by a point. Time now trail by nine, 24-15. Hassel back in motion. Brogan airs one out long for Andy Johnson. Couldn't hold it. Got his hands on it, but it would have been a spectacular catch, and he just couldn't pull it off. You know now, Bob. I wonder about that choice of play. They're down. And now nine points. There's 151 remaining in the third quarter. Why go for the distance? I mean, what you need is ball possession. Uh, you're only a touchdown and a field goal behind. Why go for uh, uh, broke? I, sometimes this football team just defies description, and I think that was a very, very poor choice of play. One of the few so far that today. Rich Camarillo, who has averaged 43 yards per punt in this his NFL debut. Another good one. There's Mike Nelms, a very dangerous man. 25. Not even that far. 24 yard line. Excellent coverage by the Patriots. Again a reminder that Johnny Bump Bumpus, a guy we followed on NBC through the Golden Gloves and then the Olympic trials will get a title shot. The USBA junior welterweight crown is on the line as Bumpus meets Willie Rodriguez next Saturday on Sports World at 4 Eastern time. Also those ever popular aerial athletes oh, about yes. whom Bob Trumpy rhapsodized earlier will test their skills in the tricky winds of the Sierra Nevada and the National Hang Gliding Championships all next Saturday on NBC Sports World. Another 46 yard kick that time by Rich Camarillo. They've gone through Hubach and Hartley in New England this year. Perhaps they found their punting answer in Camarillo. Holy smoke. Steve King had that thing gift wrapped for him and couldn't hold it. Took him by surprise, I'm sure. Yeah, look what I found is what he's going to say here. Bounces right off his hands. He is wide open, though. Joe Theismann's got to be saying, oh, give me that ball back. Give me that ball back. Second and 10, 24 yard line, a minute 35 to play third quarter. Virtually the entire period up until this series of downs has been played in New England territory. Walker in motion. Give the ball to Riggins, off left tackle. And Riggins for about four yards will leave them with third and long. Richard Bishop makes the tackle, number 64. Mark May, offensive uh, tackle of the Pittsburgh or of the Washington Redskins, did a great job out of Pittsburgh. Uh, Julius Adams went outside. May just kept him out there. Good tackle. Tim Fox, oops. Trying a little kung fu on him there or something. I'm not sure. That's not a handshake. I know that for sure. You mentioned Mark May. He, of course, was the Redskins' number one draft choice out of Pittsburgh. The entire left side of that offensive line, Russ Grimm as well, both of them Pittsburgh rookies. They need six. And they won't get it that way. Art Monk 
who last year was their number one choice and the first number one draft choice the Redskins had had in 12 years, dating back to 1968. Could not hold on that time, and the Skins will have to punt. Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that not the first time that Washington has been stopped in the second half with 48 seconds remaining in the third quarter? It has been totally dominated by the Washington Redskins. It would be my pleasure to correct you if you were wrong, sir. However, you are correct. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mike Connell has punted for an average of 43.3 on three kicks. Stanley Morgan calls for the fair catch and takes it about the 37 yard line and it looked Trump after he grabbed it like there was a little bit of daylight ahead of him and he could have made a run back instead he goes with the fair catch 41 seconds left third quarter still Redskins by nine and the rain continues to pour down on the patrons at RFK Stadium there are many empty seats needless to say every Redskin game is a sellout way in advance and this marked number 111 in succession a few decided that discretion was the better part of valor today and stayed home to watch it on the two. The New England Patriots had 12 first downs in the first half and in the third quarter they had a grand total of two with 41 seconds left in that quarter. Fashionable Tough. rain gear displayed moments ago by the Redskins cheerleaders. Grogan lobs it over the middle and he's got Hasselbeck who breaks a tackle and is across midfield and into Redskins territory. Well, he is obviously recovered and still taking advantage of that underneath coverage, the linebackers running the tight end through them. I would guess it's impossible not to miss a Russ Francis, but Hasselbeck has done a wonderful job filling in for it. You know, he said, too, that he's a painter, and now that he's a starting tight end for the New England Patriots, he has less time to paint because he's got to watch more films and he's got more bumps and bruises to take care of and things of that nature. Tony Collins on the last play of the third quarter, a good game. It's going to be second down at about five when the fourth quarter begins. Watch number 59, Brad Dusick of the Washington Redskins. He goes outside. Shelby Jordan kicks him out. He's playing with that bad shoulder. And Collins up underneath. And that's the side that they have picked on all day long. At the end of the third quarter, the score is Washington 24, New England 15. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Fifteen minutes of football remaining in regulation. The ball is at the 43-yard line of the Redskins. The Patriots go back to work offensively, second down and five. And this man is six yards in receptions away from becoming only the third player in NFL history to go over 10,000 yards for his career. They give it to Tony Collins. Collins will get the five yards and then some. He is driven out of bounds near the 30. Mark Murphy, the free safety, forced him out. Well, it does appear that since he took his gloves off, he's a little more confident in carrying the ball. He now has 97 yards on 17 carries, been the best ball carrier for the New England Patriots today. And they have not really featured running the ball to that side so far today. I believe if New England is patient, they'll be all right. But Washington played that third quarter. New England did. Now it's New England's turn. And Collins closing in on a 100-yard day would be the first of his career and the first by any Patriot this season, Tony Collins. Close to a first down, he got about nine on that carry. Well, he's certainly over 100 yards now. And Bob, you know, when you're a player down there on the football field, there are things that, that add to your emotion, uh, that make you a better football player. And the fact that he fumbled the ball away a couple of times in the third quarter, uh, certainly adding to his inspiration so far in his fourth to at least get the end zone to make up for the touchdown that he allowed Washington because of the fumble. He got nine on the carry. With Gary Pets throwing a good block for him. Second down and one. Here's Collins again, this time working the left side. He has got the first down. Dave Butts and Mark Murphy. Butts from the left tackle spot. Murphy from the free safety combining to bring him down, but not before he got more than enough for the first down. The clock running with 13.55 left in the game. The Patriots driving and down by nine. You know, I wonder if when he went to the sideline, if maybe the offensive coaches of the New England Patriots stated, son, we're going to give you a chance to get us back in this ball game. He is a fine, fine running back, too. And if it hadn't been for the injury to Vegas Ferguson, number 43 that you see behind him there, 
he might have still been an unknown quantity for the New England Patriots. From the 18 yard line on first down, Brogan is going to air it out, puts it up in the middle of Hasselbeck, and Hasselbeck is brought down at the nine. There's a flag on the play. Holding New England. You got it. football team when they go out to play a football game you, you don't want to beat yourself and New England has had some of the the worst luck so far this season with penalties we saw them in Pittsburgh when penalties just killed them holding penalties and it just seems that every time there's a crucial play it jumps up and grabs them. the turnovers this, this team has just been snake bitten red cash in the referee both these clubs seven I do believe he said 77. Gary Pett's on the hold there. You're right. Both these clubs have to see yellow flags in nightmares each evening because they are among the most penalized in the league. As a matter of fact, the Redskins are the most penalized in the NFL. And actually today, the Patriots, as you can see, have been hit more frequently by the officials than have the Redskins. First and 20 from the 28 instead of second and one at the nine. 13, 22 left. Hassel back in motion. Grogan with ample time. Does he have a receiver into the end zone? A flag goes down. There's pass interference coming up here. Tony Collins had the ball, but evidently caught it out of bounds. I believe they're going to call it on uh, the on Washington Lavender. Redskins, too. They're going to call it on Lavender. It's going to be first and goal. He was standing right there to make the call, too. The back judge was number four. He was standing right there to make the call. Lavender did it right in front of him. Ben Tompkins made the call on the play. And Red Cashin will announce it to the crowd at RFK. Of course, since his microphone doesn't work, it's to no avail. Let's see if we can pick up the contact between receiver and defensive back. It appears that Lavender, well, the flag is already thrown, so it happened before the ball got to Tony Collins. That's a 24-yard penalty. Uh, New England will have the ball first and 10 at about the four-yard line. First and goal, right? Uh, excuse me, first and goal, yes. You know, Collins showed great concentration because he did catch the ball, regardless of whether he was out of bounds. He was being bumped around, kept his eye on it, and hauled it in. Well, you got to admire the choice by the New England coaches in the third quarter. Collins was their demise, and he's been their, their only man so far in this fourth quarter. They're not going to go away from him. Lynn Dawson is in. They have both Dawson and Hasselbeck in. There's Dawson in motion. Hasselbeck is set up on the left side. They give it to Cunningham, and Sam Bam Cunningham is in there. Good drive by New England. They didn't try any hope shots. The pass interference, you know, good discretion. Showed some patience. They've got the weapons to do it. White Wheeler with a good block there to allow Sam Bam Cunningham in. Is that his first touchdown of the 1981 season? It's his first touchdown in a year and a half. How about that? Well, with that kind of blocking, I think you or I could have scored, Bob. 13-12 remaining. Cavanaugh to hold. They botched one up already. So this is by no means a given. But it's through there. He had trouble with it again. That ball almost slipped through his hands, Bob. So we've got a ball game again. 13-12 left. And the Skins lead it by a deuce at 24-22. John Smith getting set to kick it off. Nelms is waiting deep in the middle of a three-man set for the Redskins. And it will come down to Nelms at about the eight. Mike Nelms, what a 75-yard touchdown return with a punt in the first half. It lunges out across the 35 to the 37-yard line. What a weapon. And we have another Redskin down on the ground as you look at the drive. Six plays, 63 yards. On the subject of statistics, We've gotten a correction now on Tony Collins' numbers. Earlier, the official indication was that he had gone over 100 yards. Evidently not. He's got 19 carries for 94 thus far. Let's see how Washington approaches this fourth quarter now. They turned very, very conservative in their first drive of the fourth quarter. Just over 
with 13 minutes to play as John Riggins lowers his head, tries to steamroll for some yardage. Richard Bishop shoving him back. Steve Clark also there, the rookie from Kansas State, number 65. Just two yards on the pickup, and I think uh, the Redskins are presently doing New England a favor. I mean, Joe Washington has been dynamite out of the backfield, and you don't want second down and eight yards to go. You want to throw the ball to the running backs on first down. Not a great day for Riggins by any means. 34 yards on 12 carries. They try it again. And he churns out to about the 44. This is going to leave him with third down and two. Bob Golick on the tackle. What's your call here? Third and two from the 44, exactly 12 minutes left. Now the call is coming in from the bench. Hand signal to Joe Theismann. I would be a bit surprised to see uh, John Riggins carry it again, but I, they're eating up some of the clock, but my goodness. I don't think they can concern themselves with that at this point. This is a ball game. They're not You're in right. command. They're up by two. You've got virtually the entire period to play, don't you think? I agree. But here comes Riggins again for no gain. And there he goes. Stop for a loss. Julius Adams got there first. They're going to have to punt. That's two series now in the fourth quarter. One, two, three, punt. Very conservative. Three carries by John Riggins. I question that, and I'm sure the people in RFK Stadium wonder, too. Stanley Morgan dropping back deep. Mike Haynes normally returns kicks for them, but he, of course, is out with the collapse blow. Connell kicking. Low one. Wobbly. Sure. Let's see if Morgan does the wise thing, just backs away from it, and they down it at about the 24. So here's the situation. 11 minutes and two seconds left in the fourth quarter. The rain is a bit less heavy than it was earlier in the day. Skins lead it by two. later tonight by the fireside when this gentleman attempts to read the interesting feature article in this week's pro he'll have a heck of a time trying to separate a soggy page 22 from 23. I would expect here in the nation's capital he would at least have the uh, Saturday Review on his head as opposed to Pro Magazine. Or an old copy of the Washington Star. Exactly. Collins to carry. Tony Collins, who's having a heck of a second half, now should be officially over 100 yards. Well, since he's the one that really put him in this spot, I suppose he should be the one most responsible to get him out. He's done an excellent job so far in the fourth quarter. He stayed with it, too. I think most running backs would cut back quickly there. He stayed with his blockers, went all the way out to the sideline, then was able to turn up. Second down and three. That's great position for the New England Patriots. And now Collins has indeed cracked 100 time he's done it in his career 20 carries for 101 and they try him again and he's shy of the first down it's going to be third and short upcoming third and about one and a half and he has been able to hang on to the football as Steve Grogan tries to uh, sight line just how far it is here comes Sam Bam Cunningham number 39 into the ball game doing here fellas there's only 17 seconds left on the 30 second clock they'll have time to snap it as they come up to the line of scrimmage and a timeout is taken by the Redskins they could not decide exactly how many guys that they wanted to put in there maximum of 11 but which 11 was the big choice so with the timeout nine minutes and 46 seconds left in the game we'll be back with a third down play for the Patriots right after this the combined log for these two gentlemen reads three and eleven. Joe Gibbs one and six. Ron Earhart two and five. Skins lead here by two. 24-22. It's third down and two. For the Patriots. Cunningham and Collins are the running backs. 9.46 left. They give it to Collins. Needs two yards. Gets that and more. Flag. I think they're going to call number 80. Don Hasselbeck on the hole. My goodness. That's the eighth penalty, I believe, on the New England Patriots today. And it's amazing how many times that comes up on third down and short yardage situations. Ah. 
Red Cashin stepping it off. Let's see if Red's microphone works. Number 80 on the offense, still third down. You had it right on the money, Trump. Hasselbeck was holding. You'll see him black down on the defensive end. Carl Lortz, number 71, hooks his arm with his left arm. That's a good call by the official. And Lortz really beat Hasselbeck to the inside, and he had no other choice than to try to get away with something like that. Here's the penalty yard. It's New England 8 for 65, Washington 3 for 40. Most of those 40 yards and penalties against the Skins on that pass interference during that last Patriot drive near the goal line. Brogan now on third down and 12. Fires one long for Hasselbeck. Interference. Yes, sir. You got it. Interference. Hasselbeck was behind the defense, and Grogan's pass was short. Murphy is called for the interference, but in truth, had Grogan aired that out a bit stronger, Hasselbeck would have been gone for the touch. You might be right. You know, they picked on Mark Murphy almost all day. He's had one interception, that out of the zone coverage. And with the motion that New England is using, they're putting a free safety 29, 29 in coverage on the defense. when he's not First used down. to being in coverage. And I have a feeling that the heaviness of the football had a lot to do with this underthrown football. But you see the contact there. That's a good call. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. That cost them 32 yards to the 46-yard line of the Skins. Nine and a half minutes left. We've been riding a seesaw all day. The Redskins are in front. But the momentum belongs to the Patriots. Collins to the 45-yard line. The word momentum, perhaps the worst of all sports casting cliches, but indeed today, Trump, there has been plenty of that. There have been times when it appeared as if one team was totally in control for extended stretches, yeah. and now it's New England's time to play that role. New England played the first quarter, Washington played the second and third, now New England in the fourth. It's amazing. Whoever invented this game and put points on both ends of that ball is an absolute genius. You know that? in front of Parrish at first. Grogan heaved it long, but Parrish had that diagnosed completely. Morgan had no chance whatsoever. There was a much better chance that Parrish would intercept it. Once again, New England has shown great patience here in this drive, with the exception of that play, when he airs it out. It's, uh, it was second down at about nine, and if they got half of it, then it's no big deal. Grogan really got nailed there on a blitz, and uh, they were expecting the long pass. Short intermediate range would have been an awful lot better, but that's easy to say up here. People sitting in the booth and in the stands always have 20-20 vision, right? Andy Johnson back in the ball game. Grogan 14 to 22, 248 yards and two interceptions. Morgan to the left, Jackson to the right. Tight end Hasselbeck also on the right side. Grogan out of the shotgun on third and the long eight. With plenty of time, but without a completion. Stanley Morgan was there, but he was surrounded by at least three defenders. Mosi Tatupu and Andy Johnson were open underneath the coverage. That's easy, I repeat once again, to see up here. But he was going for the downs. Which has been their approach almost all day long. And it has, it has led, in fairness, to a number of big gains. On the other hand, you've been saying throughout the second half especially, that they might do well to take it bit by bit exactly. instead of in huge chunks. But I don't think that's a comment you can make on this game. Historically, I believe that's what New England has done. Always try to go with the big play. Rich Camarillo now. To try and get this one out deep in Redskin territory, but it rolls into the end zone for the touchback. So the ball comes out to the 20 with eight minutes and 28 seconds remaining. The Redskins cling to a two-point lead as we go to NFL 81 and Byron Day. There's a team with a lot of offensive firepower, but very few victories to show for them. Uh, they don't have any defense at all. Rich Camarillo's punting yardage today, by the way, is 44.2 for an average. They swing it out to Joe Washington, who must have given Joe Gibbs heart failure as he held that ball out there for a moment, deep in his own territory, risking the fumble. Mike Hawkins on the tackle, and, and now it appears that Washington is going to break out of its shell here, be not quite as conservative in giving the ball to John Riggins. Oh, I still wonder about that pass play by the New England Patriots. Uh, their best receiver on the day has been Hasselbeck, number one, Andy Johnson, number two, and, uh, and Washington is sitting back there with that umbrella coverage of zone, and they still try to throw it in there. Second down, eight yards to go for the 22. Clock moving, 7.45. Washington will try and turn it outside. Uses that patented move where he leaps over a defender. And he 
Falcons very close to the first down near the 30 yard line. Joe Washington, a Patriot nemesis, if ever there has been one. Now 10 carries for 30 yards for Joe Washington. A couple of catches. He's a versatile little, little guy. He is little, too. He is not big at all. One of those catches was for a touchdown, and really it has been as a receiver where he has been more dangerous today. They have taken advantage of the New England linebackers with Washington out of the backfield as good as, I believe, any offensive team can in one football game. Washington out near the 40 yard line didn't catch that one Bob in addition to his 30 yards rushing more significantly Washington has seven pass receptions for 92 yards well the Patriots were offside I believe they'll decline this because they got very nearly 10 yards on the carry by Washington so that'll be 11 carries for 39 yards line it up off sides number 85 on the defense Julius Adams second down so they take the play and second down at about one 733 left the Redskins 24 the Patriots 22 both wide receivers on the right side say and Monk set back it's John Riggins they give him the ball First down. they had him stopped initially he ran smack into a stone wall but he bounced off that and got the short yardage he needed for the first and here comes Joe Washington the man with the dirtiest uniform on the field Riggins bangs up in there sees it knocks over Bob Golick and the offensive lineman in front of him fights for the extra yardage first down Riggins, 15 carries for 39 yards. Washington, 11 carries for the same figure, 39 yards. Inside, seven minutes to play. From the 42 of the skins. Washington again. For three, perhaps, Bob Golick with the tackle. Patriots playing without their best linebacker, Steve Nelson, who is still on injured reserve, separated shoulder. He is eligible to come off the injured reserve list next week. Whether he'll be ready or not remains to be seen. That may be one of the reasons that the Washington Redskins are throwing so much to Joe Washington over the middle. I think Nelly is a little better in pass coverage than is Matthews, who is taking his place. Second and seven for their own 45. Has Washington. It's only a couple of yards on the play. And this will leave them with an all-important third down coming up. Bill Matthews, number 53, made the tackle. Third and four. 550 left to go in the fourth quarter. Feisman's figures 11 of 21 for 156. Perhaps I was premature. It'll depend on where they spot it. It's probably close enough to measure. Interesting play by Washington, too. He goes in motion. In motion. Uh, that is Art Monk. And then comes back across. Look at that block. I believe that's supposed to be illegal. Blocking below the waist. Oh, no. I see. He's not from the outside. That's Golick on the blitz. Good catch by Monk. Just long enough by half the football for a first down. Close. 15 remaining. They're at the 48 of New England. Feisman has a four-yard touchdown run on a broken play. Nelms has a 75-yard punt return for a touchdown. Feisman to Washington for a TD. Mosley has a field goal. That accounts for the 24 for the Redskins. Washington can't get outside. Joe Washington for three yards at most. Yeah, New 
England's defense has not been able to stop Washington here and get the ball back. But I believe when the game is over, said and done with, it's going to be the inability of the New England Patriots offense to sustain itself in the second half that's going to determine who wins this game. They've had several opportunities in the second half and for trying to, when, when they try to go for the distance on uh, third down and five or six, they lose possession and put pressure on that defense once again. And it's not a great defense. maybe three and again we face third down New England scoring their 22 points three field goals by John Smith touchdown runs by Tony Collins and Sam Cunningham and they missed one of their point afters and you'll see 51 Bob Golick here sliding along the line of scrimmage in pursuit that's underneath the center and is there to be a part of the tackle I'll tell you one thing Joe Washington certainly earns every dollar he gets from the Washington Redskins does he not and they work him and work him to death Roland James in as the nickelback. Third down five. In motion, Warren. Theismann. Flag down. Flag is down. Two flags down. The catch is made by Washington with enough yardage for the first down. But let's see what the calls are going to be here. Could be holding against the skins, and it is. So this is going to make it third down and 15. As they talk the options over with Tim Fox, and really there is no option. Well, they could make it fourth down and five if they decline the penalty. No, because if you take the play, they have first down yardage. Oh, you're right. Excuse me. I apologize for that. Washington was, watch the pass. Yeah. was watching the hold and was not watching the reception. Holding. 74 of the offense is still third down. George Stark, the veteran from Columbia, is caught for holding. And a reminder again, we have 334 to play here, and after it's over, the Dolphins and the Cowboys. Second part of our NBC doubleheader. The penalties, the skins five over 82 yards, the Patriots eight for 65 backward yards. Now it's third down 15. They lob it out to Washington. Side steps one, but they're ready for him after that. The Patriots all over them. We have three minutes, 20 seconds. The clock is running, and before the Skins punt, let's check in with NFL 81 and New York. Skins come out on the short end today. It won't be because of this fella, Joe Washington. What a day he's had. You're right. Stanley Morgan now, awaiting the kick by Mike Connell. Morgan is standing at his own 15-yard line. If Connell gets away any kind of kick at all, the Pats are going to have a long way to go. This is a low returnable kick. Morgan trying to circle right. Can't pick up the blocks he needs, and he's spun down at the 17. Excellent coverage. Quentin Lowry, a newly acquired reserve linebacker, number 56, makes the tackle. Patriots have all three of their timeouts remaining. The Redskins have but one left. The clock shows 233. This was a 32-yard punt. The, the ball is at the 18-yard line of New England with 233 left. You figure that to really get in range for John Smith, they've got to get the ball to around the 25-yard line of the Redskins. Batted away, intended for Jackson. I believe Harold Jackson is going to pass this the first quarter of this football game. Brad so, Dusak, number 59, was the guy who deflected it. Watch the pattern. This is another floater a little bit. You see Morgan. It's My Joe mistake Lavender. is Joe Lavender. Yeah, Joe Lavender on the coverage. That was kind of a floater, and I have a feeling, once again, it has to do with that heavy football. Broken out 14 to 24 for 248 yards and two interceptions. Jackson to the left. Morgan to the right. Where's uh, Andy Johnson? He's not in there. It's Sam Bam Cunningham at fullback. Along with Tony Collins is the other running back. Brogan with time over the middle. Got his receiver. Morgan makes a leaping catch. That's a first down at the 35-yard line. Mark Murphy got there late. That ball continues to sail on Brogan. And obviously they're using Cunningham in there for blocking. This is a good pattern run. And you know that the Washington Redskins defensive backs are going to keep backing up. He goes up to get the football in good shape. That's a fine catch. 
the Patriots take a timeout, the first one that they have used in the second half. Their intention here to get off at least one more play before the two-minute warning, 2.13 on the clock. Once again, though, they must be patient. That's Morgan's fifth catch for 68 yards, 2.13, as you said. And the Washington Redskins are going to protect only the ground behind them now. So uh, you, you don't want to try to go for the distance. Just be patient. Throw it eight or ten yards down the field. Get Andy Johnson in there. Uh, he's another receiving threat for you out of the backfield. And then you've got five or six different people that you can throw the ball to. If and when a field goal becomes important, a field goal attempt by John Smith, it's hard to tell whether the wind is going to help him or hurt him. It's kind of a swirling wind here at RFK amidst the rain. He's one for two from uh, 50 yards or better. I believe his longest field goal is 52 yards on the season. He's one for two, 50 plus, and he's two for three between 40 and 49, and one of those, a 46-yarder today. I repeat, though, there's no reason to go for the downs here. Be patient. Throw the ball over the middle. You figure they got to get at least to the 30 and probably to the 25 to have a good crack at it. You're right. I'll, I'll buy that. Cunningham and Collins behind Grogan. Wide open is Harold Jackson. With that catch, he has gone over 10,000 yards for his career. and we have reached the two-minute warning. Harold Jackson joins Don Maynard and Lance Allworth as only the third player in the long history of the NFL to gain more than 10,000 yards in pass receptions. Well, that's a great catch, too, by Harold Jackson. Thrown low by Grogan to avoid any possible interception. It's time now for our fantastic finishes feature in the history of the NFL. There have been... So Harold Jackson up over 10,000 yards for his career and our NBC research reveals that should Bob Trumpy consider a comeback he would need a mere 5,400 yards to join him. That will not happen that comeback. Andy Johnson now in a ball game. Brogan 16 of 26 for 285. No touchdowns, two interceptions. There's Jackson in motion. Exactly two minutes left. Brogan scrambling and brought down. Brooks, number 69, was there. And let's watch it again. In the final two minutes now, uh, pressure obviously on the defensive backs. You'll see them drop. Total zone coverage by the four guys on top. And the reason that Grogan had to bite the bullet here, there's obviously nobody to throw it to. Inside-outside coverage on Andy Johnson. And you'll see the sack, a twist up front. And they get good pressure. Nobody to throw it to. Third sack of the day by the Washington Redskins. Good camera work. Does he see him? Well, he finds somebody else. That's it's Hasselbeck. Hasselbeck. Collins was absolutely uncovered out here on the sideline. New England takes a timeout. It was a good reception by, by Hasselbeck for probably more yards. Good protection up front. They did an excellent job. And Grogan had time to stand there, and he threw the ball on the money right there. Hasselbeck has had an outstanding day. That's now his ninth catch of the afternoon. Hasselbeck being held to the sidelines in the fourth quarter. Buffalo leading Denver by a score of 9-7. to seven. Battle of contenders there. And see what Cleveland and Baltimore are doing. They are late. And as you say, the Colts can't stop anybody. They can score themselves, but it's 42-28. Browns late in the fourth quarter. Philadelphia, their hands full with Tampa Bay. 13-10, about four minutes and 18 seconds to play in the game at Philadelphia. Giants lead Atlanta, and the Giants are suddenly very respectable under Ray Perkins. 24-17 in the fourth. Don't they have the best defense in the NFL so far this year? Among the tops, but I don't believe it's number one overall. In fact, the Broncos are number one overall, and the Skins are number two, so Maybe the Giants right. are no better than three. St. Louis continues to lead Minnesota. They have led throughout, and the Vikings' five-game winning streak in definite jeopardy. In fact, it's all but over. They have less than four minutes remaining there. Minnesota, however, has just scored, and it's 27-17. 27-17 with about three and a half minutes remaining. Green Bay leads Detroit 27-24, about six minutes left in that game at the Silver Dome in Pontiac. And we have to give a tip of the hat. 
perhaps of the rain gear would be more appropriate to our technical crew working in absolutely terrible conditions today at RFK Stadium. It has been pouring throughout. Underneath that green tarp was a camera. Got to protect the equipment first and the people second. You got it, right. New Orleans leads Cincinnati with seven minutes to play in the third quarter at the Dome. It's seven zip Saints. Okay, a minute 21 left here. Ball at the 26-yard line for the Patriots, who trail by two. They give the ball to Collins. Collins. A flag flies as he goes down at the 20. That stops the clock with 1.15 left. Each team has one timeout remaining. And that is the ninth penalty, I do believe, on the New England Patriots. Prior to this penalty, they were well within John Smith's field goal range. They're not outside of it yet, but this certainly doesn't help. Now they're in real trouble. Second down, and they'll have 20 yards. What do they have? One timeout left? Each team has one timeout left. Still no time to panic. They're still in good shape. Holding during the run, number 74 of the offense, still first down. Shelby Jordan is the guilty party. It's still first down, but it's first and 20 now from the 36. So we are talking about if they got no closer. A 52 or three yard attempt. Smith has hit them from this distance, but obviously you're talking about a low percentage. Jackson in motion. Reverse. They fake it. And oh, Hogan swings oh, it out oh. and it goes through the hands of Mosi Tatupu. Now it's second and 20 with 109 left. Was that wide open, too? He had two offensive linemen in front of him. John Hanna, Gary Petz. It was set up for a long distance. Oh, my goodness. Remember the Dallas and Miami. Just about set to kick it off. Immediately following this one on NBC. They go with Tatupu and Collins. No sign of Andy Johnson yet. Second and 20. Skins 24. The Pats 22. John Smith is 3 of 3 on his field goal tries today. They'd love to give him a chance for number 4. Got to get a lot closer though to make it realistic. Morgan. Brogan. Oh, a leaping catch, but it comes in and out of the hands of Stanley Morgan. He very nearly turned in a great play. Murphy on the coverage, just up there at the exact moment that Stanley Morgan was, was able to tip it away. And you'll see here, this is an excellent throw by Steve Grogan. Butts is in there on him, 65. Oh, they're both up at the same time for the football. That's a great job by Murphy. Third down now in 20, and this is a two-down area. I don't believe they can go with just the third down. Watch the pattern. Slippery footing. He Watch. had it for a second. That's a jump ball in which Mark Murphy wins. So, Trump, you don't think they go for the full 20. You try and get closer for the field goal. Or perhaps close enough to consider going for it on fourth down. There's the time inside a minute. Grogan releases. And the wobbler is off the hands Flag of Morgan. Down. Incomplete, but it Flag might be down. pass interference. Now the Redskins are clapping their hands. I believe you're going to see Stanley Morgan with his hands on Lamar Perry's pass interference. And we'll watch the pattern. That's Perry's at the line of scrimmage. Morgan goes down. He's covered. But in trying to get to the football, the elbow. My goodness. Tenth penalty now on New England, and that's over 100 yards, I do believe. Well, you could leave them with fourth and 20 and make them try a 53-yarder, or you could walk them back on this penalty and give them third and long again. Pass interference. Number 86 on the offense. Penalty is declined. It's fourth down. So you can hear what Joe Gibbs' decision is. They don't have any choice. They're going to have to go for it. They're going to have to go for the first down. How can they not go for the first down? You think you got a bit? No, I think I see Kavanaugh coming out. They're going to spot it. They think they have a better chance of hitting a 52 or three yard field right. goal than of gaining 20 yards. This is a tough choice for anybody to make, though. Here's John Smith. He is 8 of 12 for the year, 3 of 3 today, 1 of 2 from 
50 yards plus, two of three between 40 and 49. So he has kicked some long ones. He has kicked a 46-yarder today. Kavanaugh is going to spot it down at the 43. New England's hopes for their third victory of the year. Ride on a 53-yard attempt by John Smith. Dwight Wheeler snaps. Kavanaugh spots. He gets it away. It's going to be short. are celebrating. Barring some kind of Patriot miracle, both these clubs are going to be two and six. And the Skins will have their first home field victory of the year. Each club has but one timeout remaining. You can see the reaction of John Smith. No way is that long enough. Kavanaugh knew it too. It's a tough position to put anybody in a 52 yard field goal to win the game. He was short by a good eight or nine yards. Hit it decently it appears. But I have a feeling he knows right there it's way short. Now with 51 seconds left. Heisman falls on the ball. New England can stop it once and they do. Next up for the Redskins the St. Louis Cardinals who are in the process of upsetting the Minnesota Vikings right here at RFK Stadium. Next for New England, the Oakland Raiders. Here's a look at some of the games you'll see next week on NFL 81. And of course, it starts out with the pregame show hosted by Brian Gumbel. You got to admire the Washington Redskins with all their injuries. They stayed with it for four quarters, never gave up. They went through a little lull there in the uh, beginning of the fourth quarter but they have stayed with it with about 35 or 34 healthy bodies and uh, the people here in Washington who, who have been very very critical of Joe Gibbs I got to give him a pat on the back he didn't have a lot of people to call on and yet they still play a pretty decent football game coming up next the Cowboys and the Dolphins and they have probably kicked that one off already but you will not have missed much by the time we switch out there it'll still be early in the first quarter Redskins 24, the Patriots 22. The Patriots led it 15-14 at halftime. Theismann hits the deck. And there is no way for the Patriots to stop it anymore. Inside 40 seconds. Depending upon when they start the 30-second clock, they might have to snap it once more. They will not have to snap it once more. You're right. More. They Game haven't over. started it yet. Ron Earhart can head for the locker room. Both of these clubs will come out of here at 2 and 6. The Patriots still have not won a game on the road this year. They're 0-4 away from Foxborough. They're also now 2-9 and nine over the last three years on grass. The handshakes are now in order. Ron Earhart arguing some point, perhaps saying that they should have been forced to run one more play, but that's completely academic at this point. It is all over. We'll be back for some final words at RFK Stadium in rainy Washington, D.C. In just a moment, the final 24-22 Redskins. The Patriots had 432 yards in total offense to 247 for the Redskins. First time all year Washington has been outgained, but they win it. 24-22, sloshing their way.